what is your definition of high value man? Fat loser, you're a bum, you don't make money. Five foot eight, 40 to 50K per year. What is your definition of high value woman? You know, multimillionaire, successful entrepreneur, owns several businesses. Explain what the manosphere is for the people. What I tell guys is all women have value. What? Absolutely. Yeah, that's true for women, not for men. I disagree with it. Um, it's just not who I am, I guess. I'll be a stay at home dad. Oh, I don't care if my girl makes more money. What are you doing? You're a simp. What's your thoughts on being with one person for the rest of your life? Yeah, bro. Pretty much. This is what I was worried about. Men can cheat. Women cannot cheat. Um, no, I'm, I'm definitely not. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong. I'm going to attack you. And canceled. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to Don't Be Sour. I'm your host, Max Tuning. And today we have a I always say it's a very special episode, but this one is going to be iconic. We have the fresh and fit boys. We have fresh. We have fit. Do you ever go by your, your, your real name? It's funny because I either get fresh or Walter. So it's a white name or my stage name. I prefer fresh though. Stage name. It's like your, your stripper name. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and then Myron Gaines. And yeah. to be honest, I, I'm actually, I'm very excited. I'm very nervous about this episode. You should be nervous. I wonder why. <sighs> because... You might I, get canceled. <laughs> I, th I, when I mentioned a lot of like m mentioned that you guys were coming on, I, I had a lot of people like respond back to me, and be like, "Don't, don't, not them, please, <laughs> like be careful, like all this shit." And I'm like, I, I think what I like about this is I think we have there's a lot of things that I agree with. There's a lot of things I understand and like respect the the view on it, but there's also a lot of things that I have an opposing view opinion on. Sure. And I think people can have conversations who maybe don't like, you know, fully align. And that's where what I'm trying to get with this with this episode and also not get canceled. We'll see what we can do. Huh. We'll try to keep it somewhat. We'll figure it out, bro. We well, got you. Let's just let's just, <laughs> just don't be sour. Bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> don't be sour, bro. <laughs> At the end of the day, that was the whole idea is behind the, the don't be sour was like, don't get butt hurt. Don't get you know upset. It's just yeah. it's just a prank, bro. You know, and. We'll see. This is going to be the test. <laughs> why don't we start with, why don't I always like to ask the guest of like who you are and what you do and, and as if you're like in an Uber to like the, the casual person, the average citizen, what do you, what do you identify as? Like Elevator what, pitch. Yeah. You kick it off, man. All right. So simply put, man, I'm one of the co-hosts for Fresh and Fit Podcast. I do real estate, investing as well into like crypto, a little bit of stocks. And as well, I'm, all, I'm also big on networking, how to network with people, how to add value and bring value to people's lives in any way possible. That's so what I would say. Do people are like, what, what the hell is a fresh and fit? Uh, they think it's fitness only, which is hilarious. Yeah, it's, but it's a lot more than that. So basically, we're the number one men's uh, self-improvement podcast. We talk about making money, getting girls, being attractive in general, and just helping guys like stop being pussies for the, you know, for lack of a better term. And, uh, you know, there's a masculinity crisis, especially in the Western world. And guys really don't identify with their uh, masculine side. A lot of guys are soft, weak, fat, out of shape, uh, don't understand the importance of leadership within the confinements of relationship between a man and a woman. They think that men and women are equal, and that's a bunch of BS. Um, I'm also a real estate investor, author of the book Why Women Deserve Less, of course. This they, just came out, right? Yeah, it just came out. Hard copy. Yeah, this Passing is a, one of those. Here you bad go, boys. Sure. I just uh, I just recently watched the uh, the interview that you did with, with uh, my buddy Mike Thurston. Mike Thurston. Yeah. Yeah, and y'all were going over this, which I was I was I wasn't aware, and then I tried to order one yesterday, but I was like, it's not going to get here until Sunday. <laughs> Why women deserve less? Yes. Right here. So and you can, the, the, <laughs> pe people who don't know who you guys are are already going to start off like, uh, they're already like basing their opinions off of that. Yeah. What do you, like, before we kind of super dive into it, I want to sure. kind of do it in phases. Like the, the comments that I got of like, please don't, whatever, like, what's your opinion on like, what do you say to people who have like this instant thing who maybe just heard like little excerpts here, a little comments there if they like judge everything you're about from a clip? Well, the problem is that they'll see us like a lot of times it's me kicking a girl off the show or it's me making a statement about how men and women aren't the same. But what they don't understand is that a lot of times if I'm kicking a girl off the show, she's been annoying for like 45 minutes to an hour plus. Our podcasts are like three hours plus a lot of the time. Yeah. So people don't see what goes into the situation that led to me. We call it Frank Castling the girl, a.k.a. the Punisher, kicking her out, which I could tell the story of how I even got that nickname. Or they'll see me say, this is why you need to do this and this and this when you date girls, blah, blah, blah. But they don't see that everything that I say and the advice that I dispense is typically based on some type of factual, statistical reason why men need to move the way they do. And to, I guess to summarize it, what guys think they should be doing 
to be attractive to women worked maybe 50, 60 years ago, but that's not going to work now. Times have changed significantly thanks to feminism, thanks to <clears throat> a bunch of other modern conveniences that we now enjoy, and guys have to adapt to the ever-changing marketplace when it comes to intersexual dynamics. And I think for most people, hearing the truth, like how we say it, is very, I would say, not normal because they've been told lies their whole life. So it's being Lies. A, oh, yeah, a lot of lies, man. So it's being up front and saying the truth really sparks them in different ways. Yeah, yeah because the thing is, the things that make a man attractive are inherently unflattering to female nature. It makes women look bad. So they don't like us telling the truth about what it takes to actually be attractive to a girl, arousing to a girl, and maintain your girl. Okay. Okay. Well, why don't why don't we start with I want, I want to talk about before we dive into like the opinions sure. of, of everything. I want to like talk about the podcast itself because as someone who not only creates content um, now has a podcast, I have a lot of uh, a lot of like interesting like. Uh, thoughts when I see your guys studio and the way you set it up and you know I look at it as a different way that someone maybe just like an out outsider but like how did you briefly just start the podcast like why and why fresh and fit you I think I history? think we we both uh were avid fans of YouTube itself we lo we left the platform a lot of creators on on a space and we, we went into like the red pill space so to speak but from that uh journey itself we had our own opinions our own experiences we said you know what Let's bring it together to create a Fresh Fit podcast. And when I mean, was this? What year? This was like when... Let's take them through the history real quick. Yeah, so, there you go. <clears throat> so what happened was, so back in uh, 2019, I was working uh, for the government, right? Uh, I was a special agent with Homeland Security, and I had started a fitness business. And it was doing well, et cetera. And I was like, you know what? For me to scale this thing up, I need to get on YouTube and, you know, push my... Um, my content out there if I want to get more clients, right? And I was doing well. I was, you know, I was making six figures with the government. I was making six figures in my fitness business doing online coaching. Um... And I noticed as I was starting to give uh, fitness advice, a lot of guys were struggling with women, right? Because let's be honest here, most guys hit the gym to try to get girls, right? So, um, so that led me into um, meeting content creators that were more inclined with like helping guys with dating, et cetera, right? In the RP space, the Red Pill space or whatever. And then I met a guy named Solo TV 84 shout out to him, good friend of ours. I don't know who's that. He's a YouTuber. Okay. And he said, yo, you need to get with my guy, Fresh Prince CEO, who's also in Miami. And I was like, oh, okay. And at the time, Fresh was doing prank channels. You know, right. like those gold digger pranks. He was doing gold yeah. pranks. You were doing those? That was me, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> so he was he was doing pranks, and I had a fitness channel. So uh, Solo introduced us, and we got a, we jumped on like a Facetime call on Instagram or whatever, and like we like you know pretty much we bonded. Like, wait, you're a womanizer? I am too. Oh, this is awesome! Woo! And then like we just started talking about you know the dating dynamics in Miami. We started talking about hey, you've dealt with this, or I've dealt with that, blah blah blah. Um, because guys that are good with girls, it's rare, bro. Let's be honest. Here. A lot find. of guys are simp's, or they don't get it. So uh, so we met up that night, pause, went and had some dinner and, uh, you know, we were basically like, yo, we should like do collabs. And then we started doing like a podcast where it was like, he was at his apartment. I was at mine just doing it through like stream or like on some zoom type stuff. And people really started to enjoy it. So I said, you know what? Let's take it to the next level. Let's get a studio and do this the right way. I think this is called falling in love. Pretty much. <laughs> Y'all like, Pretty did much. we just become best friends? <laughs> business yep. love. Yeah. Business, business, exactly. Business. So, so, um, so we, so we got a studio and we started, um, doing the pod like in studio to make it more professional. Um, and yeah, it just took off from there and it grew quickly. Just with you two, you started it or was the yeah. idea to get a bunch of girls in the show. That so oh, it's, so it's <laughs> funny. So we both had a vision, And our producer, right? Chris. And we, yeah, we had and a common goal. Chris. And I think for Myron, he had a vision of what he wanted the studio to look like. For example, the GTA style, you know, the Miami lifestyle. That was definitely what he, want, what he wanted. I wanted more exposure, people that weren't in our space to see our content. So you know what? I like that content. I want to be a part of it. But when it comes to the girls, right? Yeah. It's funny. Me and Myron had a double date that day. And it was late night. It was like maybe like two in the morning. This is like late 2020. Yeah. We're, so we started. The, this the, is recent. I mean, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. The first podcast, I'll never forget. October 26th, uh, 2020 was yeah. our first episode. In studio. In, in studio. Then right around like December-ish or something like that, or maybe even early 2021, we, we had a double date with some girls and we... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we had been drinking a little bit. I so, go mind you, you don't, you, I, don't, you don't drink, right? We don't like, drink rarely, alcohol. Rarely, rarely, like we, almost never. We never drink, right? So that night, I actually drank too as well. I don't know why I did that. I was just feeling myself, right? So we're like, I'm like, bro, we're in the studio late night. We got a nice size view of the water. Let's go live with the girls. He's like, are you sure, bro? Like, yeah, why not? So we just tested it out. We, we went live, talking, talking to shit. And people liked it. They yeah. came on like two in the morning. So it's just just four people, just the two girls and you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah we were uh, just talking. And like, we nor mind you, we normally film at 6 p.m. So when people saw got the notification that we were on at like two in the morning, they're like, what the hell? People are at the club going, yeah. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> the boys are on. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. So, so, and then it just really started to take off and people enjoyed it. So we called it Fresh of Fit After, after Hours. Mm. So, and then after that, um, you know, we kind of, we saw people really like this. So we just started scaling it up, bringing girls on the show and having discussions. 
And that's the and, first uh, time yeah. in history where our type of content brought girls in to talk about their opinions. Because before, it's like, man talking to the camera, hey, bro, do this, do that. Versus yeah. like, well, this is how I feel about this. So we brought yeah. it out to the, to the forefront. What, what we were basically able to do was bring women and men into one room and have really difficult conversations when it comes to intersexual dynamics. Yeah. And I got to give a shout out to Kevin Samuels because he was doing something similar, mm -hmm. but he was doing it one-on-one -on -one with a girl on Zoom. Rest in peace. You know, rest in peace to him. Uh, but like with us, what we did was we brought the girls in person, in yeah. studio, having these discussions, and it would be like a, a million of them. And so, Ke Kevin focused on the black community. Mainly. Yeah. yeah. Us, we tried to be diverse and bring girls from different uh, demographics, different age groups or whatever from Miami. Rest in peace. But, uh, but yeah, so, so he was doing that at that time with the Zoom calls, and we were doing it bringing girls into the studio. Why did you, why did y'all, y'all was in like an apartment, right? Yeah, yeah, My spot. I, I sc Where he lives. Wait, that's in your, your actual apartment? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so when I was... <laughs> when like, wait, I, what? No, no, okay. Wait, what? So oh. when I was bringing, bringing you all on the show, I, I, like, you know, I was doing the, like, my research and whatnot, and I, I went way back in your Instagram, and I saw like, where you turn, like, turned the, your apartment into the studio. Because yeah. in my mind, I was like, why didn't they just rent like, a studio and make it a studio? They literally rented an apartment. I was like, is that like a Miami thing? They want to be like, in the Miami vibe? And you have literally... You guys can't see it in the studio, but I have maybe 15 sound panels. These guys have... 200 yeah. every square inch in your kitchen. I'm going to yeah. put some on the screen. Yeah. Like in your kitchen, sound panels. Every, I, I almost think you have too many sound panels. Yeah. It's so, and you, you live in there. Yeah. Live, yeah. What? Yeah. Cause there's like a whole other section where I got like my bedroom, a closet and everything. I'm, so for me, right. I'm like a minimalist, right? So like I, I don't own many nice things. I got like, you know, nice watch here and there, but I buy this cause it holds value. Um, but yeah, I invest all my money into the studio and into real estate. And that's pretty much it. So for me, I look at it like it's a ta it's a great tax benefit for one. Uh, lets me write off quite a bit. And um, no, no, how do you eat, how do you make food, bro? You're not like, kidding, bro. I don't cook. <laughs> he's a minimalist through and through, bro. Yeah. You couldn't even make a pop tart in your fucking yeah. studio because yeah. you're like you're yeah. like ah, there's uh, the cable equipment's going through there. Because I can only imagine. I mean, we have this table set up for four mics are ready to go. You just plug yeah. in this next one here. I mean, you can have how many people can you have? At one time, ready to at any time. We've had, um, max, like, we, we've, had we've had like twenty plus people in there. Yeah, like with microphones and all. Yeah, that, we can host up to thirty two mics. How does that even? Like, I can only imagine. <laughs> it gets chaos. crazy. I like, it gets crazy, bro. <laughs> we've we've had sometimes like twenty plus girls on the panel. Mm -hmm. So, is there going to be a fresh and fit two point studio, or you or you're like we're going to ride this out? I'm going to continue. Just we thought about expanding to different states, but yeah. for now, we're just going to focus on just I guess like we thought about class. going out like LA, for example. But then I realized like California is probably not a good move, yeah, not a good aka move. California. So I was yeah. like, nah, we're well, just Miami is probably the spot to get for like y'all's type of show of having a lot of women on and. I guess the ease of getting them because there's a lot of girls in Miami. I mean, there's a lot of girls everywhere, but I would say, because not everyone wants to go on social media related things, but yeah. on a podcast because it might yeah. make them look bad or, or for whatever reason. But yeah. it seems like you guys have like a unlimited pool of new faces every time you do a show and you do a lot of content. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's it like, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes. Like, you know, getting girls for the show isn't always that easy um, because obviously our reputation and stuff. Um, a lot of girls are like, oh, that guy Myron is mean. On oh, TikTok, oh my God. You know, like, and they see like these clips that are out of context. But what happens is like, if you actually like watch a podcast from like beginning to end, like I articulate my points as to why men have to move the way they do and why so many modern day women are delusional. Um, because we see, we live in a society now where you got certain classes of people that can't be criticized. Right. right. If you say anything about minorities, if you say anything about women, if you say anything about like, you know, those people that might or might not transform, blah, 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 any of this stuff. Right. You're considered like misogynistic, bigot, jerk, asshole, intolerant, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, like everyone is capable of doing stupid stuff or being stupid. And you need to be able to criticize those people. But you can't criticize certain classes of people, which is ridiculous to me. And how, how, so how do you get all the girls in the show? We have a team we that have, does it. Yeah, a whole team. You're not just sitting there all day like... Oh, right. hell no. We used no. to do it. Yeah. And we were like, no, fuck Mind this. you, when we first started the show, we used to do seven show, seven days of work, which means, for example, two to three shows a day, seven days a week for a whole year and That's a half. That's wild. Yeah, bro. I don't know any other podcast that does as much content as we, as we did at the very beginning. Yeah. And we used, to, we used to go live sometimes at like midnight. Yeah. We would start the podcast at like midnight. So I, I have a couple <laughs> more questions about getting all the girls on there. but. Sure. Let me rewind a little bit of, of you guys as a, as a partnership. One thing I always worry about with like starting a partnership with anyone is the the breakup, the falling out, the yeah. I don't care about it as much as I used to, but this the other person still does a lot. And then there's like resentment of like I'm putting in more effort. Do y'all ever like worry about that at all? Or are you very clear up front? And be like, 
don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. Like we're both going to be in this like hundred um, percent. I think we uh, understand each other like to the max. For yeah. example, I know Myron, who he is as a person, what he wants. He knows what I want as a person, who I am. So that being said, the fact that we know what we each other want, we have common goals, helps us move forward. Because I think most people that do collaborations or do business part- partnerships, they either have different goals or they have a similar goal at the beginning, but then it changes. Right. For us, it's, That's it's what you don't, you don't want. Yeah, exactly. So I'm real big on loyalty, right? So yeah. I started this with Fresh, right? And I started with our boy, uh, Chris, a.k.a. Aaron C. Poxon, so I'm yeah. going to end it with them. Um, and my thing is, and it's kind of weird for me because coming from a law enforcement background, this is something that kind of was just a given to be loyal to the people around you and integrity. Yeah. But in the YouTube world slash, you know, AdSense, sell you off for AdSense type world, it's, it's different. So for me, we start together, we end together. And then, yeah, we've obviously we're human beings. We've had disagreements and stuff, but nothing yeah. ever major. It's always been like something small that we like, all right, okay, yeah, just, just do this, blah, blah, blah. So um, we understand that we have to put our egos aside sometimes and make sacrifices for the show. I mean, the first year and a half or so that we did the pod, we didn't leave Miami. We filmed the whole, uh, like pretty much almost every day. We it was slept. a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. Um, pretty much we gave up going out and partying and drinking alcohol like in 2021. Yeah. So yeah, we made a lot of sacrifices for the show and we both understand that and yeah, I mean, our goal is to like take over, like be one of the top podcasts like in the world. And also, let's say I'm wrong or he's wrong. We're not afraid to say, yo, yo bro, come on, man, shape yeah. up. Because we have a common goal. And the common yeah. goal was 1 million subs. I'll just like, expand and do further as well. Yeah. So. And we got a lot of haters. So we look at it like we, we need to stick together. Us you know, against the sure. world. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It does feel like that sometimes. It's cool. I, I feel like all, at least maybe the shows I've watched, which I've, I've consumed a lot of y'all's content over time and definitely right when I found out you guys were you know able to come on the show um I know you're more like the outspoken one you're more quiet reserved like you, you have very similar opinions and 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 stances on the world but I feel like he's he does more of the hey like let me talk let me talk about this kind of shit like yeah. I think we go about it different ways mine's more like conf- confrontational yeah. more in your face and more like behind the scenes if that makes sense yeah he gets a lot more girls than I do <laughs> <laughs> like if we're gonna put it simply like because uh, I, I have very low times for like uh bullshit from women um and for him he kind of he's able to like kind of f- finesse it in a way so i'm I'm very straightforward with girls and he's able to kind of more sell the dream yeah how, <laughs> pretty much how quick into the podcast before y'all started making any like real money dude i'm trying to think I would so, say like, because you only been doing it for like three years. So yeah, I mean, and you so, seem to be doing really so let, well. Let's go back. Okay. So we, um, so when I first started the podcast, I was still working for the government. So I was still earning, um, money from the government. And then we had, um, and then I had my fitness business as well. So I had money saved from that. And then we released a course. Yeah. I, th- um, I, I think maybe like four or five months in. Yeah. Because we didn't, mon- YouTube money was okay. It was maybe like what? 10? Yeah. But we had course sales. We had a Patreon. Yeah. Um, Wait, four or five months in, you're already making like 10K? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like a more, more, more than that. Yeah. More than that because because we, we were, set, we were Actually, doing- yeah, more than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we were- Because I still had my fitness business. And the other thing too is that when we invested in the studio in the beginning, like I took your, like- Your yeah, apartment. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty much. We dropped like 40K um, in the beginning I to like get it. everything set yeah. up with the equipment and the mics and the cameras and all that other stuff. It cost about 40K to like get it started up. So, and at that point I bought it all with like credit cards, but like I had the money cash. I'm real big on like using credit cards to get like points. points. Huge, so, huge credit card guy. Yeah. Big credit yeah, card guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you pay with cash or a debit card, you're stupid. I've, I've, I've been trying to tell this, yeah. the people and like Dude. the people who disagree with, I don't even want to go down this, this path, but continue. No, continue. we've done whole episodes on credit too. Well, I just like the people who argue about it. I'm like. I'm not talking to the people that literally think that if I have a, a <laughs> listen, man, we don't play bro. We don't I, play I bro. Know. <laughs> but the people like, if you, if they have a credit card, they think that it's this magical thing. They're like, I have to buy a yacht now. I, Oh, oh yeah. I have a $80,000 like monthly limit. I have to spend $80,000. I'm like, yeah. if you just treat it like a debit card, yes, you reap all of the rewards. Yeah. And they're like, no, because it tricks you into, you get points. Now you're going to buy more things than you would. I was like, well, if you're that type of person, then maybe you shouldn't have. But as yeah. if you're a normal person, can manage your finances, you are responsible with your money. Yeah. What, I, it blows my mind. Yeah. I actually, I actually, I yell at my girlfriend all the time for using a debit card. Yeah, I was dude, like, like it's ridiculous. And one of my friends, I'm going way too deep in this. One of my friends, like I use a credit card for anything like, like over a hundred dollars, but the lower stuff I don't I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Do it for everything. Whether yeah. you make five cents on it or a hundred dollars on the purchase and cash yeah, back. You're spending it anyway. That's what I'm saying. Fucking idiots, man. Anyway. <laughs> so going back, uh, I was, we were talking about the- um, Money we made from the podcast. Yeah. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah. So in the beginning, we were good off because I had some money saved. Uh, we were doing courses, Patreon, 
uh, we're getting super chats because the channel was monetized at that point. Yeah. So it w yeah, we were doing uh, in the beginning over t over 10k for yeah. sure uh, a month uh, in the first like two or three months. And luckily, we both like had jobs before. Yeah. He was working in tech, I was working in law enforcement, so we had, we had money saved as well. Mm -hmm. So when I left the government in December of 2020, and that was because we started to blow up on YouTube. They're like, hey, man, you can't be saying this stuff on internet. Well, I was blah, thinking you're probably dancing the line of like, this, oh, this yeah, either dude. has to work or I'm going to be screwed at my yeah, job. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. They brought me in. I'll never forget. In November of 2020. So we did our first episode October 26. Mid-November, they bring me in and they're like, hey, you know, your YouTube channel, you're saying these things about dating and blah, blah, blah. blah you know, and you're a federal agent. You can't be on the internet like that. They're probably like, uh, and I need some tips, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that too. <laughs> uh, my, my wife's divorcing me. <laughs> So, um, so kind of, they were like, Hey, you got to like pick one, like you got to shut down the YouTube for a few months or, um, you know, leave or, or resign. So I just pretty much, and they didn't think I was going to resign. Like no one ever leaves a job like that. It's very difficult to come on as a, as a special agent for anybody, whether it's FBI, DEA, I worked for HSI at the time, whatever it is, right. It's very difficult. They hire them less one, less than 1% of their um, qualified applicants. So I left and they're like, what the fuck? So yeah, I resigned in December 5th, 2020. And then at that point, I had some money saved. I bought real estate with it. And then we also had money um, invested into the studio. So and we were generating money at that point as well. So we were able to, you know, just from being intelligent with our money prior from our professional careers, we we're able to save it and then still make some money from the pot as well. Can y'all, have y'all ever stated like how much roughly you make from all the podcast, like just podcast world. I'm not going to talk about real estate investments, outside investments, just the podcast that could be Rumble super chats, donations, everything you do, podcast world. Like, how much money does that bring in a month? As a man of God, respectfully, I have to decline that a question. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> it's it's guy, interesting bro. how you'll talk. They already, they already know, bro. Like, you talk about everything. You can't yeah, not we're, talk we, about we, that. We, yeah, we were the number one super chatted channel um, in 2021. Or, yeah, 2021. 20? How about, the, Actually, how about for two years? Yeah, 2021. And then I think we're in 2022. Number two or three. Number two or three. Yeah. It's six figures a month, man. I was going to say. So, uh, yeah. so, it's so, over, so, over 100K a month. I'll just say yeah. this, man. Respectfully, we can buy a couple watches a month. Oh, <laughs> You're yeah. like... You're yeah. like, it's like have, have you seen Spring Breakers, the movie? Yeah. Look at my shit. Yeah. Look at my shit. Like, you think I'm not yeah. doing well? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm fairly transparent with my stuff. I mean, you know, all my money goes into real estate, so I invest it right back and I buy houses. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do pretty well, man. We're blessed. Yeah. Uh, but like, I look at it like, you know, I'm, I need to take that earned income and invest it into passive income, into passive income making assets immediately. So well, I'm, I can, I'm black, so I move in the shadows. <laughs> Something, <laughs> you know, when, when y'all mentioned about how much uh, content you're putting out, I think people who aren't into content creation can't really conceptualize like how much effort that is. Because when y'all yeah. are doing all those shows, even now to this date, I feel like every day that I go on my YouTube, it's like a, no, a new podcast that came out eight hours ago, seven hours ago. Yeah. And I'm like, it's every day. Yeah. It's so right now we used to go six days a week, but now it's uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we film. Okay. Right. For fresh and fit. And uh, we do a daytime show. So like on Monday, for example, will be money Monday show. Right. And then on then we do the girls right after fresh and fit after hours. The money Monday show will go somewhere between 60 to 90 minutes. Right. Yeah. The daytime show. Then right after we take our break, I'll go to the gym. He'll go get some food or whatever. Then we'll come back and we'll do the girls. Right. And then um, that will go for like two to three hours, depending on how big the panel is. Then uh, Tuesday, we don't film. And then Wednesday, same thing, two shows, then Friday, two shows. And then I also have my Feta channel. I drop a video on Thursday and Sunday. And then he has a vlog channel where he drops channel uh, content like three, four times a week. Yeah. So yeah, we're like, pre and then we have a clip channel. Our clip channel, we put out six videos per day with 10 shorts. Yeah. Who's, who's editing all this shit? We got like a team, team. That, that, that does it for us. Yeah, and it's, it's not all us. quick. I think y'all have like the unlimited money hack by doing the live show mm -hmm. and then, you know, getting all the benefits of that. And then yeah. you just take that show and it's not as simple as just up. like, you know, yeah. slapping into YouTube, but like there's some work, but like to it's like you make money here and then you repurpose it for here and then exactly. you make the clips and y'all stuff is very shareable, controversial. So it's very, uh, people are really going to be like opinionated in the comments on those. Yeah. So, yeah. The, clips, the clips is like, since we live in like a TikTok clip world, like the beauty of clips is people are able to consume your content quickly and it's nice, easy to share. However, you lose context a lot of the times oh, with, yeah. with yeah. clips. They right? started at, you know, 30, exactly. four minutes in. So when, the, right before you're like, hey, d d you know, I just want to say this, so, you know, I'm taking this with a grain of salt. They just started right after. Yeah, that. they started yeah. with the crazy stuff, right? So like, and that, that you know, with the type of content that we make, it outrages a lot of people, right? Like with us, Andrew Tate, etc. When we say the things that we say that might be considered controversial, but they don't see what led up to us making that statement. But it's it's good and bad, you know. It's in this short, you know, form content area. Yeah. And people under, underestimate, like for example, 
how much work it takes to do content, as you said earlier. But doing it live is, an, is a whole nother level, bro. When you're live on YouTube, bro, whatever oh. you say, yeah. whatever you do, <laughs> can be held against you in a court. I stream YouTube. sometimes and I'm yeah. stressed out about just potentially saying they're wrong. Or someone says a comment and it just triggers me and have some response that like I didn't oh, think about. Dude, it's crazy. Like the thing also about being live <laughs> is we're live, right? And like the people are like sending in super chats or whatever, like make, making, you know, jokes, jokes maybe on the girls, on us, whatever it may be. And then like a girl will act crazy. I'll be like, yo, get the hell out of here. And they don't want to leave. It will be live on air. And the chick will just be like, I ain't going nowhere. And it's just like crazy because it's live. It's like, oh, so it's like you got to, it, you know, it's, when you do things live, it's like literally live. You got to just make it happen right then and there. And you can't take it back because it's live. <laughs> yeah. So basically, whatever you say, is Pe people are waiting, are waiting to just like clip it, clip it. Like yeah. just yeah. be like, they can get out of context. If you're like, oh, we'll cut this part out. Be like, no, no, no. It's, it's yeah, all, it's all it's, out there. It's all live. So like, um, that's one of the benefits of being live. And one of the uh, um, negatives is that like, okay, it's live. So like, we don't have to edit anything. But the other part is that like, you can't edit anything. But yeah. even if you're not live, for, like for example, our good friend Andrew Tate. His stuff is like pretty much like pre-recorded. However, once again, they, if they don't like you, but they got out of, con out of context. So it's just crazy, man. Yeah, no, hundred yeah. percent. And all right, so circling back to bringing all the girls in the show. Yeah, can you walk the people through what is the uh, like procedure of girl comes into the apartment? Because I notice things like you put your phones in a basket. There's like no mm -hmm. phones. Like, mm -hmm. why do you do that? Did you have a problem with it before? And like, what do you tell the girls of like? Because I'm assuming most girls aren't just like whoa, there's a podcast. I want to be on it. Like they have to be aware of it. And I don't know if some girls think they want to come on to like, I'm going to, I'm going to show him or something. Yeah. yeah. And like, like, what do you tell them ahead of time about the show? Max, it is homework. I like that. So, okay. I'm really glad that you, that you asked this question. So we have a whole procedure on how we do this. Right. So normally I'll have one of my many wives go down and get the girl. <laughs> he, he's no, not kidding. By no, the way. No, no, I, no, I know. I know. I know. No. So, um, so there's one right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of your wives in the, the back? It's wife number two. So, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I need to see her reaction. <laughs> she's laughing. At least she's laughing. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, uh, normally what we do is, so I have, uh, we got a couple girls that work for us, right? Shout out to Zena and, and uh, Icy and all them, right? What they'll do is they'll go downstairs, get the girls, right, from the lobby, bring them upstairs. And they'll warn them, hey, you know, just be respectful, blah, 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 give them the whole shebang, this is how the podcast goes, et cetera, Right. Then they bring them upstairs. And typically we'll be filming the daytime show, right? That, uh, that I was telling you about, right? While they're coming in? While they're coming in normally and we're, or if we're finishing up, right? So we finish up. Then um, my producer, Aaron, a.k.a. Chris, he goes and gives them a speech. Okay, ladies, this is what you got to do. Blah, blah, blah. He takes them through the podcast, how it's filmed. Okay, don't do this. Don't do that. Um, what you can't say, what you what, can't say. What, what, like, what, what, don't they, what, what can't they do? What can't they say? Like so he'll basically tell them like, hey, the pod's live. Don't stare at the screen when we're on air because if you stare at the screen, you look weird, right? When we're having a conversation because mm -hmm. we have a big monitor like right in front of the, the camera. That's when you pull up their Instagram. Yeah, and they'll and just stuff. be looking like this the whole time staring at themselves. So he's like, don't do that because you look weird, which if you watch it back on the playback, they do yeah. they look ridiculous. And don't forget, you used to be a teacher. <laughs> yeah, he always says that. I used to be a teacher. And then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he said that. And then, um, and then what, 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 um, when we used to do thumbnails with the girls, he'll put them out on the balcony. He'll take mm -hmm. a thumbnail, take a couple yeah. pictures, make sure it's good. He'll seat them in a, in a way that's the best, where the girls actually look the best, right? Um, right. You, you have to fill out a, a form. It's like, is your yeah. left side or your right side yeah. your better side? Okay. And then the girls check their purses because we've had one girl bring a gun in there before. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, with, <laughs> with academics, it was crazy, man. <laughs> what? It went, it went viral, yeah. Yeah. So we have Oh, the girls uh, yeah, you kicked the girl. Was that the girl we kicked out? Yeah, we kicked yeah. the girl yeah. out one time, but yeah. we found out after she had a gun in her purse. So um, that's a whole other Mickey. thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so um, we search their stuff. We search their bags, make sure there's no weapons or anything like that. Move, move them out once we do. Then um, Chris reads them the rules. And then he seats them down. And then, you know, obviously they have their phones and stuff at that point. So a lot of them want to take pictures or stories, stories for their Instagram, whatever it may be. Um, and then after that's done, typically um, we'll both walk in. I'll be coming from the gym. He'll be coming from upstairs or whatever he was doing with one of his chicks. And then we'll... Uh, <laughs> what is this life you live? Okay. <laughs> it's crazy, though. It's crazy. Um, wait, wait. Do you live in the same place? Like same yeah. apartment complex? Just a little bit higher. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, so we'll come in and then we'll sit down and we'll start filming the show. Now, mind you, a lot of times me and Fresh haven't spoken a word to the girls at this point. It's only Chris that's spoken to the girls and the girls that work for me, right? And they'll be sitting in the back chilling. And <clears throat> so then I'll remind them again, okay, these are the rules. Be respectful. You know, we don't try to kick girls off, blah, blah, blah. We'll give them a whole spiel again. Then we go live. So they get the lecture pretty much three times yeah. of being respectful, whatever. So that's why, like, by the time we kick a girl out, it's like they're, they've already messed up, like, Ten they times. made that choice themselves. Yeah. I mean, come on. And we've had girls come on to try to like, oh, let me be funny and try to get kicked out. Could you imagine 
someone comes to your podcast, your house, and says to you, well, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> so what do you expect? Like, That'd be really weird if it happened to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, the alternative. But the point is that, like, that right there is total disrespect because you're coming into the space right. to be disrespectful. Yeah. So so that that's kind of how it goes. So that's why, like, when people see us kicking them out or whatever and we have low tolerance for it, it's because we've warned them so many times. And it used to be where I didn't have girls in the back. So girls would behave in a crazy way because they're like, oh, they can't do nothing to me. So we notice having girls in the back that work for us helps a lot of the times because then the girls will actually leave. This one mm. time, our old producer for the sound uh, engineer, he actually had to do exorcism on one of these girls because she would not leave, leave the area. It was yeah. like... In the name of Jesus, <laughs> bless you. Yeah. Do, do, do some people here like, hey, like you, I told you the rules, you broke the rules, whatever they are, whether you agree or disagree, like I need you to leave. And they're just like, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. No. It's I'm, happened a I'm few staying. Times. Yeah. I'm not leaving. Yeah. Girl starting to fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm not leaving. It's like, bro, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, is, is the idea when you like reach out to them, is it like, hey, you come on the show, uh, you know, we're going to talk about guys and girls and you're going to get exposure from it or... And do you like have people like that come back? Like, do you have repeated girls? Yeah. So it's funny. So we keep stats, right? We've interviewed well over two thousand girls. I think I've only kicked out like one hundred and fifty. Yeah. So that's a, that's still. I mean, well, no, no. not not in comparison, yeah. but like right now, one fifty two. One fifty two. Okay. One hundred fifty two girls. You, you, have, you have a tally board like on your <laughs> in like your room. Two thousand to twenty one hundred. Yeah, we got a guy that keeps the stats. Like yeah, from forty five states and like um, fifty plus countries. I think. Shout out to him. And um, so we don't kick out as many girls. A lot of the girls. Most of the time, a lot of the girls come back a second time. Right, but there's always that small minority that come on and act like idiots, and we kick them out, and they can't come back. Yeah. Okay. But I will say though, some girls get huge benefits because they'll get, for example, a yeah. lot of OnlyFans subscribers, or they get like a lot of people saying, "Hey, come to my gig, come to my gig." So or they got musicians, like, like they get a, like a producer will reach out to them. Like a lot of girls get like crazy opportunities from like yeah. from it. And I always tell them too, like before we start the show, like, "Yo, this is an opportunity for you. Don't mess it up." Because if we kick them off, we take their Instagram off the description. <laughs> yeah, and it's alive. Yeah. So, you know, is, it wouldn't you said that like they could get exposure for like their OF or something. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like the people that watch that show? Wouldn't that be not the people that would want to subscribe? You'd be surprised. We're because our audience is very like I want to say split. Some of them are simps. Some are not. But the majority are simps. So what happens is those guys are like, oh, yeah, bro, you're fat. Da, 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 da. Or the same guy is saying, you know what? I'm sorry. I said on the show, like, you're, you're amazing. You're beautiful. I'm so to your yeah. OnlyFans. It's like, are you serious, bro? But yeah. that's, that's our audience, man. A lot, of, a lot. There, there is a good, decent amount of simps that watch our yeah. channel, like, they'll, and they'll watch it just to look at the girls. They'll diss them on the show, but love them behind the scenes on Instagram. Yeah, I, I think what I find super interesting about about your show, there's a lot that I find interesting because, again, like my whole I, my views on everything that you guys talk about on a regular basis is probably the I don't want to say the opposite, but I'm more of someone who like, hey, I don't, I'm not as like outspoken. I don't, I don't go hard one way or hard the other way. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, what I've learned is if you kind of have like your audience split where you're like, I don't, I'm not like super hardcore about one opinion or belief or or whatever, then you're always going to have split, but you'll never have half of your audience really hardcore, like, you know, have your back. But if you are, I am this way, this is what I believe 100%, the, the 50% that do that are that way will be they will all be like all for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's like, it's wild to see like a lot of y'all's, you know, commenters because it seems to have your back and whatnot. Yeah. So w with our supporters, like they're super, they, they rock with us for real. Of course, you're going to yeah. get like those uh, people that are kind of in the middle that watch the show just for the girls or whatever mm -hmm. to simp. But there's a good amount that definitely like, they, they were like, damn, like these dudes like saved me from like, you know, doing something to myself. Because a lot of the times, all we're doing is like telling guys like, yo, this is how the world really works, especially when it comes to females and dating, et cetera. Like stop being a simp, work on yourself, become the best version of yourself. And then a byproduct will be the women. But a lot of guys think like they live their life for girls or they don't understand why a girl did something to them in a relationship or why she broke up with them. And sometimes just knowing why it happened will be the difference between you put, you putting a gun in your mouth or not. And also having the option to make a change for yourself because most guys are like, you know what? Life is depressing. I give up. I don't know what to do. First is, hey, you know what? Work on yourself, fitness, mindset, money, all these things can add to your value. And then over time, what happens is you become successful, you get more value, and then girls want to be a part of your lifestyle. And so oh, having sorry. an option also helps as well. We, we, we just, basically, I tell guys to date girls like girls date guys. Like, and I went viral on TikTok for this as well and got canceled. But I said, like, <laughs> men need to treat women like expendable commodities like they do us. Because when girls date guys, they think, okay, what can I get out of this? Um, let me, what's in it for me? Like women date with the purpose of what they can extract from a man. I tell guys be the same way with the girls because when you play their game back on them, they start to respect you because most guys say, oh my God, please, how do I get this girl? How do I keep the girl? You need to say like, okay, how does she benefit me and be willing to walk away from her? That's exactly how women op operate in, in deal and dating. And when guys do that, girls instantly respect them because they know, oh, 
this guy's willing to walk away from me, whereas most guys aren't. And it yeah. differentiates you from all the other suckers. As a man, what is your greatest power when it comes to like, dating women? Me, my deadlift strength. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I say that. That's a good yeah, point. That is true. <laughs> but it literally is being able to walk away at any point in time. That right there is all the power you have. We, we tell guys all the time, like, yo, like, future, bitch, don't get too comfortable. Like, when you operate like that, like, where girls aren't comfortable uh, w- where they stand with you, that's when you get the best treatment from women, when they know that they can be replaced. It's just like with an employee and employer situation. I tell guys, you are the employer. She's the employee. She needs to know that there's other people willing to take her spot. This is a prestigious law firm. She's got to come with her, you know, T's crossed, I's dotted. And that's when you get the best treatment out of your girl. But when she knows and she's comfortable, which is why we don't we don't think guys should get married. That's a whole other thing. But when girls get comfortable a lot of the times with the guy and know that he can't go anywhere, they're going, that's when the disrespect comes. That's when the emasculation comes, the talk backing, the, you know, insults. Shame, guilt, all that stuff, that's when it occurs is when she knows that you can't walk away. You're basically just like, they just need to live in fear at all times. Pretty much. Not fear of <laughs> safety, <laughs> safety yeah. wise, but, we say but fear, fear of losing you. Yes. Not yeah. fear. We always tell guys like, bro, you, if you're yelling at your chick or God Don't forbid, like putting, hit your hitting woman, her or anything like Never. that, you already lost. You have yeah. no leverage. That's why you're doing that stupid shit. You need to be able to look her dead in the eye and be like, you're effectively single now. Get out of my house. And if you have that power, that's when girls behave. You don't have to lift a finger or raise your voice. She should be have the fear of God of you leaving her. Hmm. A lot of the girls you bring on the show who you'll say you're, you know, these things too, and a lot of the, they, they get a lot very uh, heated, opinionated, yeah. argue back. Do, do you think, like, it, it almost feels like, I always joke that I say I've been making the same YouTube video for like 10 years, but I feel like, you know, your podcast is essentially, it's like the same episode over and over again. And, and you're very like, these are my thoughts. Like they, they're not changing episode after episode after episode. Yeah. And you still get so much pushback, kickback yeah. from the girls. And I would say, would you say most girls who come on the show are aware of the show? No. I would well, say 50-50 at this point are aware for sure. Mm, I They've would seen say TikTok clips and stuff like they that. They may see it, but they, 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 they act they, like they don't know about it. Yeah. Never or, heard of it. Never, never heard of you guys. Or it's kind of like, they live in this delusional world where like, okay, that's his opinion, but this is what it's really, really about. And it's kind of like that dynamic never changes. So girls come into the podcast. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to prove my, my, uh, my run wrong. Or it's, for example, it's like, oh, um, well, I believe this and whatever he says is, is nonsense. So it's kind of like you got those two type of people coming to the podcast. So it's, it's, um, so it's two things. Cause you're saying like the same thing. So I've always said like the truth doesn't change. Yeah. Right. So, um, girls will come in with their thoughts and, and this is why I'd be saying all the time, like I say, Oh, you bring on stupid girls on your show every single time. Oh, no, no, no. They're not educated, blah, blah, blah. The only difference between like a chick that like has a master's degree, which we brought them on, and a chick that has no degree, we definitely brought them on too, is that the girl that has a master's degree, only thing that changes is that her standards have went up. She wants a guy that makes as much money as her, is educated as her, and she's able to better articulate her delusion. The dumb girl, you know, believes the same thing. Feminism and men and women are equal, blah, blah, blah. It's just that she's not able to articulate her points as well. Now, I will say this. We do bring on a considerable amount of girls that agree with us. You'll notice, though, that they stay silent or they don't say I, anything. I, I noticed yeah. that. So there's a bunch of girls that, like, after the show will be done, they're like, damn, I agree with you. I just didn't want to say anything on the pod and, like, you know, cause issues with the girls. Because keep in mind, when they come in together, they sit there, they talk, etc. And a lot of times they become friends after the show or they don't want to be ostracized. So what they'll do is they just won't say anything during the show. And then you'll have, like, one or two or three girls that are outspoken about some of the points that we make. But a lot of girls actually do agree with us silently. And then there's a, the occasional girl that comes on the show that watches the show or is aware of what ha- what's happening and says, you know what? How do I garner an audience? Yeah. I'm going to agree with what they're saying because that's going to give me an audience. Or the, or the complete opposite where they want to be like outlandish or just, I don't know if outlandish is the right word, but maybe just like the extreme. They either want to really, really disagree. They want to be as, as like the loudest one in the room type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And that's- We kick girls off like that sometimes too, like the attention horse, because you'll get some of those and I was like, bro, bro, get the fuck out of here. Like they'll, they'll, they'll make nonsensical points or they'll just talk to talk and it's like, bro, or or Chris will start roasting them, whatever, uh, in the back. Do you ever kick it? Uh, do you ever like find, have you ever had people on the show? I, I, I keep saying like girls, because I'm, I'm, I'm talking about those episodes, right? Yeah, I know yeah, you have sure. a lot of like guests on, but uh, the, like the women you have on the show, do you have you had any that have like had very strong opinions that were, like a, a thought you didn't think about or like an angle you didn't think about. They're like, that is a good point. Um, so we, we've actually a couple episodes ago, we had like this staunch feminist on, I mean, the thing is, man, is like, I pretty much am like a black belt with debating feminists at this point. <laughs> right. And I, and, and, and you know, the book, why women deserve less. Like I refute a lot of the feminist points that a lot of these girls bring up. Right. And it, the, the thing is this, 
feminism is just like communism. It sounds great on paper, but it doesn't work in reality. And the reason why is because men and women are inherently different from a biological level where it's hardwired and you can't change it. So feminism tells women they're equal to men and they should want an equal partnership. But the reality is what they're attracted to and most importantly, what they're aroused by is not equality. Women want a man who's superior to them in every single way. This is why, like, even when we bring these master's student girls on or PhD girls, they make 120, 150, 200K per year, et cetera. They're still not satisfied because they can't find a guy on their level financially, if not better. So even though they make all the money that they need and they are able to provide their own security, they still want a man that can provide more security than them. And this is hardwired traits. So it's like feminism says be equal to a man, but they're not attracted to that. They don't want equality. They want a man who's superior. Essentially, they become the man that they actually want. The, the women become the, the man that they want? Yeah. Yeah. Literally. These super hyper successful women, they become the man that they're trying to attract. And yeah. what they don't realize is by them becoming successful and making this money, <laughs> right? Well, we all know to make that kind of money, you have to have a type personality. You have to be a dominant, assertive, competitive, aggressive, non-agreeable. These are all traits of higher earners. And these women that make this kind of money, well, congratulations, you make that money, but I don't want a chick like you. I want a girl that's like the opposite of me, feminine, docile, cute, et cetera. And the analogy I always use is, well, if I decided to wear heels on Saturdays, would you take me seriously? The girl always says, no, I wouldn't. So why the fuck do you think I would take you seriously when you act like a dude? But the problem is this, men are expected to accept masculine women Whereas women would never accept feminine men. And society applauds women for not accepting feminine men. But if I say I don't want no masculine ass chick, I'm a sexist, a misogynist, and a jerk. And the problem is that male standards are demonized while female standards are appraised. Could you imagine dating yourself? Just You had a vagina? I would have sex with myself, for <laughs> sure. I'm good looking as fuck, no. man. What are you okay. talking about? Okay. You might, the answer, yes. You might, you might smash yourself. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You might smash yourself, but will you... I actually want to be with yourself all the time. Now I'd be annoyed, honestly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of what <laughs> it is. Funny. And when we bring these like <laughs> feminists on or these chicks on that like act like dudes or I don't need no man and all this other bullshit that we have that we say, I just tell them like just be be happy being single then, or you're not going to be able to keep a guy long term because you're annoying. And when I tell girls this to their face, it's um, it's it shatters their reality because. Men never tell women the truth because guys want to get laid. Never. If guys like were more honest and told them, you know what, you're fucking stupid, or you know what, that's not right, or your worldview is actually skewed, etc. Guys wouldn't get laid. So what do guys do a lot of times? They go on a date with a girl. They listen to what she says. Okay, this chick is invested in education. This girl's invested in her job. Blah blah blah. They go, oh, that sounds great. Oh, you get money. Oh, wow, that's attractive. Blah blah. blah. They say that what they got to say to get laid. But when I come in and I tell them, listen, bro, no one cares about how much money you make or your status. What are you talking about? Why would you want a broke bitch? No, I'm not saying we want a broke bitch, but we don't care about girls that make money, especially guys that make money. So the more money a man makes, the less he cares about her money. As a guy, you have two options. Okay. Either be right or get pussy. <laughs> so guys, that simple. So, yeah, but yeah, go ahead. The, the devil's advocate of, you know, kind of like guys who maybe hide their opinions or, or and you're very like, hey, this is this is how I feel, whatever. Do you feel like the aggressive way of saying it, like there's a there's a way to not be like the like aggressive with like your thoughts and you yeah. can still be uh, conscious of someone's emotions and feelings or, or you're like, hey, if you're conscious of emotions or feelings, you're a simp. Well, that's the problem. Fuck their feelings, man. Because at this point, like women need to hear what it really is. Because we see, here's the thing. We live in a world where if you lie, women buy. Look at the advertisers. What do they do? They target women. They don't tell her you're a fat bitch. They tell her, love your curves, girl. <laughs> They don't tell her, right, if she's if she's an annoying, fucking, like, you know, annoying, insufferable fucking cunt. They don't tell her, oh, you know what? You should probably be nicer, you know, to attract men. They tell her, no, you go, girl. You're strong and independent. You're a queen. And they, can, they can't handle you. We sit there, right, and enable bad behavior from women. We never tell them you need to be feminine, docile, not fat, keep your hair nice and long, you know, don't dress like a hoe. Don't be promiscuous. We don't tell women any of this stuff. Own your sexuality. Yeah, go ahead. Be a hoe. It's your body, your choice, blah, blah, all this other bullshit, right? We never put parameters on what women should and shouldn't do to be attractive to the opposite gender. We basically enable whatever they want to do. And the reason for that is because when you lie, women buy. Advertisers know this. So since women are 80% of the consumer base, they're incentivized to lie to women. And we live in a society that pretty much props up 
the feminine standard of how they want to live life. We don't tell women the truth. Men, however, they have to live in reality. If you're a fat loser, you're a bum, you don't make money, reality constantly smacks you in the face and reminds you that you're not adequate. You don't get girls, your peers don't respect you, you get negative reinforcement for your bad decisions. Women, however, don't experience that because even if a girl is a dumb bimbo, some simp will sit there and say, oh my God, you're so special, you're beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Like, if you've never had to work for the attention or the attraction of the opposite gender, why would you actually self-improve? Why would you? Men have to self-improve to get what they want. Women don't. So since women live in this world where they're able to get whatever they want, regardless of how they behave, they're going to act crazy. And when I come in and say, listen, you probably shouldn't be fat. You probably shouldn't be rude. You probably shouldn't be insufferable. You should probably think about what your partner wants or what men want in general if you want to get the best guy and get him to actually commit to you and take you seriously. That's considered misogynistic. Is the whole phrase you just you just said, is that, uh, I have a quote here that you said. Sure. In, uh, fuck, where did it go? It was some, it said, it was like, uh, men have to become women are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was, that was you. That was that's essentially what you're, what you're saying. Yeah. It's like men need to develop their status and develop their, I guess the, the ability to be attracted by the opposite sex yeah. to be desired. Yeah. Whereas like not that a lot of women, they just are. Yeah. So like, I'll give you an example, right? So let's go like into a dream world, right? Kay. Max, right? Here we go. <laughs> right. So <laughs> let's say, right, you just turned 18, right? And I'm so, legal, bitches. Yeah, you're, le you're legal. You go buy your first pack of cigarettes. You just had your birthday party, et cetera, right? Then you get a DM from Kim Kardashian out in LA. Hey, what? you want to come hang out? I'll, fly, I'll buy you a ticket. Then you get invited to a yacht in Miami from, you know, some female soccer player that's hot. I'm living a good life. And then all of a sudden, right? Then someone else offers, hey, I'll send you $1,000. What's your Venmo? And then someone else sends you, hey, what's your cash app? You should probably make an OnlyFans. You're so fucking attractive, Max. I'll pay you, you know, 300 bucks. And you, some other guy, some other girl- I'll pay you your know, rent. Yeah, we'll pay your rent. Like, and this is all when you're 18, right? Let me ask you this. If you were getting all these offers and all these opportunities given to you, would you give a shit about what women want? What these girls want that are offering you this stuff? I guess no. I'd be like, I'm having fun. Yeah, exactly. Right? You would, you guys just want to have fun, right? That's exactly <laughs> the reality for a lot of attractive modern day women. They don't have an incentive to self-improve or understand the opposite gender because women have the privilege where no matter how they behave, they're going to attract the opposite gender. Men don't get that privilege. That's why I always say for a man to attract a girl, you must understand them. For them to be, for them to attract you, they don't have to understand you. This is why so many women don't understand or know what men want, even though we're simple as hell and we haven't changed over the, you know, uh, centuries. Yeah. But that's what it is. That's kind of where we're at now where girls have an overinflated sense of self-worth a lot of the times thanks to the internet, thanks to Instagram. And I talk about this in detail in the book. The average woman doesn't respect the average man. And as a matter of fact, most women don't like most men. So guys have to become superior and excellent in every, every way just to get a chance. What, can you break down the average, average women don't respect average men? So the average guy is about five foot eight, 40 to 50 K per year. That's considered unattractive to a majority of women. Most girls are chasing the same demographic of guy. Six foot, $100,000 plus per year, charming, charismatic, etc. They're looking for a Disney fairy tale man. And this man is less than 1% of the population a lot of times. Yeah, but are, are you putting like all women into one category of like all girls want this, uh, you know, the high, high value man, right? Yeah. But I definitely think there are, and I don't even want to call them outliers. I think there are a lot of great girls out there that aren't, aren't in the world that are some of the top tier beauty, right? That aren't in that world of, I want dudes to fly me out. I want to do this. I want to do that. And like, I think just the type of personality and the people that they're around in the area where they grow up, sometimes they're not, uh, I guess, influenced so much to be, go down that path of well, yes and no because, riches, right? Because basically what's happening, right, is the advent of social media. So back in the day, where you grew up is what you knew. For example, your circle, your family, it taught you certain things. Nowadays, we have TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, all these conventions showing you how you should think. So what happens is that girl that's a good girl, right, nowadays, is being taught by TikTok how to be a bad bitch. Or for example, oh, you know what? If your man, is doing, if, if your man, if your man isn't doing this, don't um, show me any love. So, so it's kind of like nowadays, that good girl, that, or that, I want to say that environment that she had before, is no longer really there for her. Now, there are good girls out there, but we're just saying the majority of girls nowadays are not like that girl anymore. Yeah, so what's basically happened is like, even though not all girls behave like that, yeah. pretty much all girls are chasing the same demographic of man, right? The, that same top 
five, you know, top 20, top 10% guy. They're all chasing that dude. And the thing is with social media and the internet, right? Girls are able to have access to these men now and they think, okay, I've dated and or dealt with an NBA player, an MLB player, whatever. This is the caliber of man that I deserve. But what they don't realize is, no, that's the caliber of man that you can fuck. That's not the caliber of man that you can retain. So you're saying if, if a girl hooks up with a guy of a high status, whatever, celebrity athlete. It skews her perception of reality of what she actually qualifies for. Because men will gladly date down and fuck down, right? But girls think, okay, I've hooked up with this caliber of guy. I deserve this caliber of guy. But what women don't get is that men play the game too. Women have a friend zone for a guy and a guy that they have sex with. Guys have a sex zone only and a girl that they'll commit to. And my thing is, I say a lot of modern day girls don't have good girl game. And what I mean by girl game is they can attain a man. Like the man's job is to attain the girl. The girl's job is to retain the guy after sex. And most girls can't do that because they think, oh, I'm just going to exist. I'm going to get laid by him. And then he's just going to take care of me. And what a lot of girls don't understand is they need to add value back. But we live in this world where women think that they're equal to men. Then they think, okay, I just had sex with him. That's all I got to do. You mentioned about uh, uh, the one of the biggest contributors to this world we're living in is yeah. social media, right? Yeah, Whether you love sure. it, you hate it. Um, it's, you know, it impacted yes. a lot of uh, good things, you know, to, businesses, but it's also, stay. yeah, no, for sure. And that's all, like, I feel like the whole world of the, the I don't know, is that like an actual word? Like the manosphere, right? Yeah. yeah. And the, you know, stuff that came out about like hypergamy and all this, new, these, these new things that like have been around for a long time, but it hasn't been popularized, talked about it yeah. um, ever since social media. Like, what is your opinion on, like, first of all, can you like explain what the manosphere is for the people? Basically, <clears throat> you want to hit it? It's, it's a secret society, guys. It's a secret society. It's the Illuminati. I mean, it's where men go to gather ideas and talk about discussions that are not normally talked about in the real world uh, behind closed doors. For example, for the most part, like YouTube, you know, forums, where men come together to talk about ideas. Mm -hmm. I think for most people, uh, let's say you have a question, right? For example, why did you break up with me? Uh, how to become a better man? Where do you go? You go online, YouTube, Google, how to become a, how to become a better man? You find a whole set of set of videos, forums, and then you talk about those you know those issues. So I think the manosphere has evolved into like YouTube content, you know, more like Zoom calls, stuff like that, pretty much. Yeah, it's basically it's nothing more than sharing notes. Yeah. And what's basically going on, you know, all across the world because we got people from all over the place watching us is all the guys are dealing with the same problems in what we call the sexual marketplace or the dating marketplace, dealing with women, right? And you know, everyone has different. Uh, methodologies to deal with it. Some guys say, I'm not going to deal with women at all, right? Go on their MGTOW. own. MGTOW. Some guys are black pill. Wait, say it again? MGTOW. Men going their own way. Yeah. So some guys just don't deal with women at all. Some guys say, um, you know, I'm black pill. I'm, I'm just going to, it's over. It's, you know, doom and gloom only. Yeah. There's some guys that understand what's going on and they adapt, right? And they come up with solutions. That's where we're at. Um, and then so there's some other guys that say, I'm just going to leave the United States or leave the Western world in general and go find a chick in Colombia, Brazil, um, Philippines, etc., where women are more traditionally feminine. Passport bros. Yeah, passport bros. So like, passport bros. there's different guys that do, d d basically we all have discovered the same issues and how people deal with it is different. So for us, we basically tell guys, this is how you got to navigate the dating marketplace in 2023 and beyond. You know, you know, I did an episode actually like a couple days ago. Um, ben Shapiro criticized what I said. <laughs> uh, basically, I said before a guy even thinks about getting married, he needs, needs to have a few things in place. Yeah. He needs to be 35 years old, make a six figures per year, six months to one year of savings, in shape, right? So that they stand above all the other guys from a physical stature. And then the last part is have sex with 50 girls. Whoa, what do you mean 50 girls? And the reason why I said that is because you need the experience of dealing with a lot of girls so that you can discern which girls deserve a relationship and which ones don't. And the reason why is because when men get into a serious relationship with a girl or marriage, you take all the risk, not the girl. We live in a day and age now where women are 100% incentivized and rewarded for breaking up with you thanks to alimony, child support, family courts, etc. So I tell guys, this isn't an easy decision to make. You need to know what the hell you're doing. And if you've had sex with at least 50 girls, you're going to be able to see which girls um, are worthy, which girls aren't, because there's a bunch of disqualifiers when it comes to taking girls serious that you need to be able to identify quickly and get rid of and put her in the sex only category and never elevate her to wife or girlfriend. So... Um, and so, and Ben Shapiro was like, no, I do that. You know, that that's terrible advice, blah, blah, blah. Because you know, the studies show that, you know, the younger you are and the less sexual partners you have, the more fruitful the marriage. Yeah, that's true for women, not for men. The studies actually show that when women have more sexual partners, it hurts their ability to be in a long standing marriage. But for men, it has no effect because men are designed to be promiscuous. That's why we make a million sperm a day. You bust your nut, you know, you could bust nuts till the day you die. But with women, they only have a finite amount of time to have a child. 
um, and they only have a certain amount of eggs. So women are designed to, you know, preserve the egg for the best mate. Men are designed to pretty much share their semen with any mate. So <laughs> we're very different. So what I said with Ben Shapiro and a lot of these traditional conservatives have wrong is that they think women still operate and behave like it's 1950. But guess what? We don't have religion. We don't have shame. We don't have society telling women not to be hoes anymore or to, to respect men. So guys have to adapt to the new normal and move with how the new normal is. So, you know, even though that, that advice might have worked 50, 60, 70 years ago, but guys need to adapt. So, you know, marrying the first girl that you're with as a guy is a big L for you because you're not going to know what you're doing. And women are way more sexually experienced than men are because in today's day and age, by the time a girl turns 18, like we discussed before, she's already had a bunch of experience dealing with the opposite gender. I always say, like, if you're a dude and you don't have that much sexual experience and you get with a girl that's 21 years old, that's hot, and let's say you're 21 as a guy, that's the equivalent to a dude with a white belt getting in the ring with someone that has a black belt. Because since women deal with the opposite gender way more than you do, they have more experience, they have more practice, they're able to manipulate you better because your dumbass can't tell the difference. Yep. I, You know, talking about, like, Girls who are younger, like, you know, 21, 22. I, yeah. It's funny. The advice I always give to anyone, like any of my guy friends or whether it be people who work with me or something, and maybe they go through some tough times and they're, they're 21, they're 22. And I always say, as someone who's, you know, I've been around the block, I'm like, I, I like to think, wait till a girl is mid-20s so that I think a lot of the party is out of, like, of out of their system, whether it be good or bad or maybe, you know... I, I guess if you can find, find a girl that never had like the party phase, but you hope that doesn't like mean she has like, this bottled up type of thing or she's going to you know explode and want to go do all these crazy things. Um, because I, I feel like, I feel like I, when I was 21, 22, the shit that I was dealing with, with the girls who are my age, now that I'm 33, I'm like, why did I, like, why was I dealing with that? Because I should have just like waited, focused on myself, which I did. That's why I've, I was single for seven or eight years. And then I've found Smart. my recent girlfriend and, um, and it, it, it's just, it, it's really interesting. And it, it kind of feels like the whole manosphere, red pill, blue pill, social media has almost allowed guys who are at least maybe didn't know their path to almost have like, it's like they were playing a game. They didn't know what the fuck to do. And now you have like a strategy guide. And yeah, like, there you that, go. Like here's, oh, like here's how you navigate through this game of life. Yeah. And, and the thing, it comes just from unawareness, right? Like I don't think men understand like how many options and what the female lifestyle is like when they're at their peak at 21. When a girl's 21 and a guy's 21, as a man, you're at your lowest. As a girl, they're at their highest. So for all the young guys out there that struggle with girls, they, a lot of times they, they don't know why. They're like, man, why is she so flaky? Why won't she give me a chance? Blah, blah, blah. Or how's, why, how's she in Arizona right now? Blah, blah, blah. But they don't get it that like girls have way more opportunities than you do. And what I tell guys is don't take a girl when she's on her decline while you're on your incline. We tell guys date young, younger girls because they have less of a chance of being hoes, having a bunch of bad experiences, having trauma, et cetera, because trauma builds men, but it destroys women. I, go ahead. I just have to, to a point. Ultimately, though, if you're a guy, right, and most guys out here, they have an idea of how girls are, but actually knowing how girls are helps you in life. Let's say, for example, right, you're a guy that wants to be successful. What do you focus on all, all the time? Getting girls, going to parties, going to events. But if you understood, hey, you know what? If I can minimize my want for girls and put my business first and myself first, and then once I've completed this mission, which is, for example, being successful, the byproduct is getting girls, any girl that I actually want. That by itself adds more value to your life. So for example, just knowing where to go, how to navigate girls helps you a lot. Yeah, and, and, not, and not like, that's what the, bit, the book, like it's um, Why Women Deserve Less, I talk about in the first like part, like this isn't about treating women poorly just to treat them poorly. No, it's about dealing with girls that give you reciprocal value. The problem is that guys a lot of times are, they tolerate women that don't reciprocate value. Yeah. Like they'll go and take a girl on a date, treat her well, be the nice guy, et cetera, and she treats them like shit. And yeah. I don't want guys doing that anymore because to be honest, most girls do deserve less because most girls don't deserve, don't respect men. So you don't go ahead and give those girls the world when they don't give you anything in return. Too many guys simp on girls that don't like them in the first place. Put yourself first as a man. Yeah, I mean, something you said is another, I, I got quotes from you guys. Huh? Sure. You said like, men level up so women can be a byproduct of their success versus chasing women. Like you should level up and the, the girl that you find or that you know you fall in love with or whatever should be a byproduct of you just doing your thing yep. rather than chasing all the time and i i think i i think my past i kind of realized the when you mentioned how especially girls who are maybe in their early 20s have a lot of options where guys don't have a lot of options yeah and i came to this realization one time that i was 
I don't know where I was at someone's house and like a girl had her uh, like hinge or bumble or something <laughs> and she like had a notification. She opened it and I, and I, I saw this with my own eyes. Yeah. Like th- all the guys listening, like when you, when you have a dating app, you, you get like a reply or a match. You're like, Oh cool. Right. You, yeah. might, you might have like five, yeah. two, yeah. Five, maybe 10 if you're crazy. Yep. This girl had like over a thousand yep. matches yeah. in her thing. And she's, she's yep. like, yeah, every day. And then she did a thing where I, you see these TikTok videos where they'll have the app and they'll just like swipe right on every guy. And it's like match, yep. match, match, yep. match, match. Yep. Yeah. Where, you know, a guy back when I was, you know, on apps, it, you could swipe left for 45 minutes and then like, or swipe right or 45 minutes and only one girl had matched you or something. You never get matches. It, it, it's, it's interesting. And this is why I tell guys not to accept promiscuity from your girl because women live life on easy mode when it comes to dating they can literally fuck whoever they want so if a girl doesn't have some type of discernment with the type of guys that she deals with yeah you shouldn't take her seriously like and, and again like going back to the studies like i said girls that have had more sexual partners typically don't make good long-term mates as a man you want a girl that's more impressionable that hasn't been you know running running uh, riding around on the cock carousel you want to check that hasn't been around <laughs> you, you always reference like studies where do you get your studies from the uh, there's a family, there's a family institute. I reference a bunch uh, in the back, but like there's, I mean, there's a whole host of slew of issues with, um, committing to girls that are promiscuous, but in general, I want guys, if you're going to wife a girl up, she's got to go through a vetting period, six months to a year. You got to make sure that she, that she deserves that commitment from you. And that's another thing. A lot of guys don't put a price on their commitment. Oh, any girl that comes in, please be my girlfriend. It's like, no, man, you got to make girls work for it. And girls, don't, human beings in general don't respect anything that they don't work for. Yeah. I tell guys, you need to be that prestigious law firm where she's shown up in a suit to interview to work at your law firm and she's got to climb the ranks to make partner. And as a business person, right, could you imagine choosing the wrong employee to work, work for you? What happens? Yeah. They destroy your property. They don't take things seriously and they bring your business down. Same thing with dating. You pick the wrong girl, she could divorce you, destroy your life. And is it worth it? No. And how many men go to school, spend their whole career going to school, working on their business to find one woman that doesn't give a shit about them but marries them takes out their money and then goes away. That happens all the time. I always look at a lot of, you see whether it be like, I don't even call them memes, just cartoons about how, a, you know, a guy will meet a girl, give her everything, and then she takes everything, you know, yeah. potentially has, you know, cheats on them or something. And I always think, I think that a lot of guys think that that is just, they, they either see it happen once or twice or someone they know, or they start going down this rabbit hole of the red pill. And I feel like a lot of guys who have the mind, the, the clarity mindset of like, I'm aware, right? The red pill, we'll call it, is, do you think it, it, it stems from a, like a, an experience that happened with them and they hold this like resentment towards women for a long period of time? And an example that I'll give you is, I, I mentioned I was single for like eight years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had, had, you know, I was just mid, late twenties, enjoy, enjoying life, right? I would, I would meet girls, but never, I would, I was just, anti relationship. And it was because early on in my twenties, I, you know, was very into a a girl and it was just drama, 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 you know, burke my heart, lead me on talking to other guys, telling me this, blah, 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 blah. And I had this resentment because I thought that because X, Y, and Z has happened to me, Mm -hmm. every girl that I meet for the rest of my life, that will happen. Guaranteed. (laughs) It will happen. She, she will, she will lie to me. She will leave me. She will be talking to other people behind my back. She will be, you know, telling me one thing and then going to someone else's house. And like, because that happened to me and it was like a very traumatic point in my life. And I just wrote off, I was like, I'm I'm just going to be this, the cool uncle for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then it wasn't until I, I mean, and then I worked on my business and, and now I guess, you know, as a byproduct of me just focusing on myself, I really do have an amazing girlfriend right now. And and I guess, do you think a lot of guys like have a bad experience and then they're just like, all women are like this. All, all girls will hurt me forever. So the thing is that guys got to understand is that all women are capable of hurting you if you don't know what you're doing. And what I tell guys is you don't take the red pill or take this continent to hate women. It's so that you don't hate women for what they'll never be to you. Shout yep. out to my guy, Rolo Tomas. He says that and I agree with him 100%. Mm-hmm. Basically, women are opportunistic lovers. And what that means is if they see an opportunity and this is the best guy that they can get with, they're going to take that opportunity. You need to become that opportunity and understand that you're an opportunity and you need to stay on point so that she continues to realize that this is the best opportunity. When women know that you're the best that they can get, they behave, they give you the respect and they follow your your um, your lead. But if they think that they can do better, that's when you start to get the disrespect. That's when you start to get the cheating. That's when you get all that. But the only way that you're gonna be the best opportunity is you continue to work on yourself. This is why I tell guys all the time, 
The mission has got to be number one. Your chick is like third, fourth, fifth fucking place. And trust me, it's better that way because as you grow and you thrive, she's going to benefit from you thriving, right? Because men are okay with sharing their resources. But when your girl is thriving and she's making more money than you, she's become more successful, she's going to start to look for other men because men and women don't make select the same way. Women look for security regardless of how much money they make. They want someone who does better than them or if not, at least bare minimum. But most girls want better. So we tell guys, focus on yourself and the girl will go ahead and fall in line. Max, but yeah, it's, it's about, it's just about understanding female nature that women are opportunistic lovers. The mistake that a, guy's, a lot of guys make is they think it's a Disney fairy tale and the chick is going to like them for them no matter what. And no, you're, you got to rent is due every single day with girls. If you notice, right, Max, we said earlier, back in the day when you're up and coming, they lied to you, they made flakes on you, all these things happen, right? When you became successful, you worked on yourself, what'd you find? Call the woman you can see the value in. So once again, all it is is you saying, you know what? I'm the best version of myself. I deserve the best as well. And I will tolerate less. And at that point, you win. Here's my, here's, I have, I have a thought. Um, first of all, I, I don't, I don't necessarily, the whole like hypergamy, which if people aren't aware, it's kind of like, you know, dating up, right? It's like the, the dating, yeah. the highest caliber. Yeah. Trying to, it's a practice of yeah. getting, a, yeah, getting a male better than themselves. But, to, but I, I think, like, I, I understand it because I like, Assuming the person you meet in a, in a, we'll call it the, the traditional world, right? Mm -hmm. Is that's going to be the, your person for the rest of your life, right? I see nothing wrong with like wanting to find the best possible mate, like who does, you know, have their shit together. Yeah. It has, you know, wealth, right? Um, and a lot of people look at it as like people who are trying to like climb, I guess. But I, I, if, if I was a, whether I'm a guy or a girl, like I would want the absolute best possible partner of in course. life, right? But the difference is, is that, you know, a, a king can marry a peasant and turn her into a queen, but a queen will never look a peasant's way. You can elevate a girl up, but she would never do the same if the roles were reversed, is my <laughs> point. Girls don't date down. Men are willing to date down. So we tell guys, understand this, know this, and accept this most importantly. Okay. And then the, the other kind of thought about that is when people, and this is something that I, I had a, a big problem with is you know, I guess I, I, I just reference again, I was single for eight years and I, I documented my entire journey during that time. And it was yeah. almost like this thing. I, I was the single guy. I was like the, I would make jokes about it. The kind of like I'm forever alone, blah, 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 blah. You mm -hmm. know, I, I respect women so much. I stay completely away from them. You know, I just like, that was like my shtick, right? It was like, I was a single guy. Um, and when I started having success over the past decade, right. And it was kind of this upward trajectory. It wasn't a one thing happened and I spiked up. It's been a very long journey to get where I'm at. Something that I feared and also what people told me is like, you know, hey, you know, kind of like, you know, the old bodybuilding.com, it's like disregard women, acquire wealth type yeah, of thing, right? Yeah, acquire uh, aesthetics. Yeah, ex disregard exactly. females, acquire aesthetics. It's easy to say that. That's yeah. right. Rest in peace. Yeah. And, yeah. um, but a lot of comments I would get is like, you know, hey, just for, like, don't worry about girls, work on your business, work on you, right? Yeah. But when you get to the point where you have the success, you have it, then everyone's saying that if you do find a girl now that you're successful, she's only going to want you because you're successful. And I was like, well, you told me to work on myself, but now that I'm successful, how am I supposed to find a girl if every girl apparently, because I'm successful, is only going to want me because I'm successful? I think guys need to make peace with the fact that girls, that's just how girls are. Like, I don't think they all are. I don't, I don't. Well, the thing is, is that women date up naturally so it, it is what it is i like i tell guys don't get mad because girls want winners like just become the winner accept that and it is what it is you want her for her youth and her beauty it's an exchange just out to your point as well so it's funny because once a guy gets money and status right what happens is like you said earlier girls will look at you as an option a better option now i'm saying this generally speaking as well if you want to become successful with women and business as well as well right do both way you go do one or the other which means when you fo focus on yourself majority of the day First thing you do is business, you go to work. Once that's done, then when you're free time, you go on, go on a date. I'm just saying make that a priority first. So for example, for me, I'll go to work at like, what, eight in the morning? I'll come home. Not now. Now you, I don't no, no. wake up till well, two. <laughs> back then, right? And then go to my second job and I come maybe like 10, right? Yeah. But after that, I was on my, on my Tinder, whatever, Bumble, setting up dates. So at 11 p.m., I can go on a date. But once again, what did I do first? My first job, second job, or my business. That was a priority. Once that was done, I got free time. I'm available. And some days I had off. So that time I spent towards learning w women, dating, and that was my experience. But if you cut off girls completely, you go monk mode, then it's like, bro, you get money, you don't know who's who. So I'm saying yeah. having, that, having that discernment of dating girls 
when you're free after you finish all your work is important. And, and the other thing too, because you were saying like, oh, well, our girl's going to only want me for my success. I think that's okay. I, I don't. I never shame women for being hypergamous. They all are. Yeah. Like it's it's built within them. Some girls are more hypergamous than others. You know, I've I've always said famously, right? Um, all women are gold diggers. Just some are better at hiding the shovel. And what I mean by that is that. Right. Some girl might say, oh, well, I'm an entrepreneur, so I want a guy that's educated, ambitious, strong willed, uh, etc. Translation. I want a guy with money. Another girl might say, I want a guy that can buy me bags. Translation. I want money. Some girls are more overt about it. Other girls are covert about it. But regardless, all girls are looking for a guy who's doing better than themselves. And typically that ends in money because men, unfortunately, we are only loved and cared about under the pretense that we provide value. That's just how it is with men. Women don't have to provide value. It's elective for them. For us, it's mandatory. So I tell guys, listen, if she's one of these chicks that's like overtly a gold digger with the big ass shovel saying, I want a fucking Birkin, or a chick that says, I just want a guy that's ambitious and competitive and blah, 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 that's still the same thing. It's just that girls are able to dress it up better. And this goes back to what you asked me before. Hey, can't you phrase it a little bit differently when you talk to the girls or whatever? And my answer is no. And the reason why is because I'm a direct communicator. Women are not direct communicators, right? They, they're, women thrive in being able to speak in the covert. They can't tell each other you're fat. They're going to say, hey, wear this black dress. You look a lot better in it. Women don't tell each other the truth. That's why we got a bunch of raging fat bitches running around here. No one tells them the other because no one tells women the truth in general. Their friends, their family, etc. It's not until I get on the pod and tell them, hey, you know you're overweight, right? Whoa, you fat phobic asshole. And it's like, no, you're 200 pounds and you're five foot five. What the hell is going on here? The average woman in America is like, Five three to five five, 175 pounds, that's unfucking acceptable. But no one tells them anything. So I say, you know what? We need to go back to telling women directly, hey, this is unacceptable, and let them know what it is. One plus one is fucking two. It's not one plus one is maybe two, or I feel like it's two. It's two. We need to go back to having direct communication with women in general. But we don't have that, which is why we have this loon world that we're in where we just lie to each other. The argument is, I don't like how you said it. Say it better. But once again, the truth is the truth. And just that... I, well, I, I guess it, it's not... Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, go ahead. Well, I, I, I didn't mean it's like, oh, I'm, I'm worried about people's feelings. I'm just like, I guess, like I. No, no, but that's a good point that you brought I, up. I, I don't, I don't talk like that. I yeah. guess you yeah. know, I've, I've, I don't, and I, and this is gonna, this is what I was worried about is, is whenever when y'all's audience comes to watch me, they're gonna be like, this is a simp right here. This <laughs> guy. pill. Yeah, this <laughs> guy. Pill. But you know, I was like, I, I think I'm doing pretty well for myself, mm. and. I guess my thing is like I've never been someone of like I I don't refer to women as disrespectful names. I don't talk <laughs> bitches talk, hoes. I, I don't. I don't <laughs> Three or four. <laughs> oh no, Max. It's okay, I, I, Max. I don't say You're that. You're much but, nicer than us. But that doesn't yeah. mean that I like yeah. am you know crazy like you know th- groveling at p- girls' feet for my entire life. Yeah, of right? course, of course. You're you're I, nicer about it. Here's the thing: yeah. I, my, people might not like my delivery, right? But I think it's to um, how do I say this? It's almost an overcorrection for how many guys are nice and dress it up and don't tell women the truth. I mean, yeah, it hurts to hear, oh my God, this is so messed up. But I think we need to tell more women this. And when I have my daughter, I'm going to be speaking to her just like this. Like, this is how the world works. You want a multimillionaire? He's going to fuck other bitches. Okay. Do you want him to, if you want a guy all to yourself, get a guy that's a little bit lower, lower level and he might cheat on you too once a year. But this is what it is. And I think if we had more honest conversations and let women know how it really is and we're more direct with them, they would move better in life. But we don't. We, we lie to girls all the time. Do you think, I feel like this whole new world of these topics, it almost feels like a Mortal Kombat game where the only characters are, <laughs> you know, men versus women. Yeah. It's Scorpion. like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just, I just feel like it's, it's dudes have their opinions on how, like, women are and women are have their opinion on dudes and it's like this constant battle of like who's correct who's right who's i think a big reason too why we've blown up is because really fresh to fit a lot of the times is the first time that people are able to see right there in hd live a guy tell a girl what men really think and what men really say behind closed doors in a locker room and how we move because most guys never tell girls this because they want to get laid. So like, oh, wow, he's actually telling them what we think. This is crazy. Let's see how they react. And the reason why women react so negatively towards it is because we never told them the truth or how we really feel. And we've asked before on the show, do you even know what men want? And they don't, they don't know what, they don't, they don't know. And I'll be like, because when I ask a girl, okay, uh, tell us about your preferences, blah, blah, blah. They're totally cool with saying, I want a man that's over six feet tall, makes money, ambitious, in shape. Guy. They're okay with saying it. But when I say, okay, what do you think that guy wants back in return? It's fucking crickets, man. Silence. <laughs> uh, there's a big disconnect between what men want and what women want. And that's shown on the show several nights. Yeah. But the thing is that, like, if you're a guy out there, right, 
and you don't know what, what women want, what happens to you? You get no pussy. Well, luckily but, we have Mel Gibson in the movie to <laughs> let us know. <laughs> but if you're a woman, you don't know what men want, you still get laid. So for them, it's like- You still get attention or resources I, or something. Why, why would I even improve or care what they want? So that disconnect right there is one of the main problems I see with relationships nowadays. Okay. What, do you, what, is, what is your definition of high value man, high value woman? Because I'm assuming those are, if you're a high value man, you're looking for a high value woman? Or, I mean, you, you mentioned how you could, you know, a girl can do what, like, be in whatever stage in her life and you'll bring her up and it doesn't matter. She could be, you know, what, it doesn't matter how much money she's making, whatever. Um, just the, like, certain attributes that you're looking for, of the quality of girl that you, you would want for your preferences, your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. What, what, what would you consider someone who is, is a high value man and who is a high value, desirable female? You want to take it first? Yeah. So simply put, for a woman, right, I would just say, for one, she respects you. Two, she's not a hoe. And three, she's a burning, a burning desire to want to be with you and you alone. So for a guy, and, and this is me saying, for example, when she's with a guy, by the way. So high value woman is when she's with a guy. All these traits that I just mentioned earlier is when she's actually with a guy that she cares about and respects. Then for a guy, he has peers that respect him. He's successful in his own right. And as well, he adds value to the world. In that sense, I would say he's, he's high value. But once again, this can be ter- termed any different way you want to. I'm just saying this is my opinion on uh, high value. Okay. But so. uh, just to add to your point as well, going back a little bit, you said earlier, how does a guy know when he's successful how to find a high value woman? And my thing is like, once again, she respects him. She's a desire to be with him sexually. And as well, she's willing to help add value, value, value to his life and follow his program. Those things right there, Make sure, you know what, this woman that I'm picking to take care of for the rest of my life cares about me enough to say, you know what, I'm putting my man first and I'm going to help him on his mission. You, you mentioned one of the things about being a high value woman. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll use a different phrasing, but you, you said like she can't be promiscuous, right? Yeah. You didn't mention that in the, in the guy high value. I know y'all's uh, <laughs> you view, views on all of that. Why, I would assume, like it's crazy that that is a characteristic trait that needs to be in a high value woman. Cause I would just assume when you're in a relationship, you are faithful to your partner. And now I know y'all's views is a little bit different on mm-hmm. how the man doesn't have to be faithful to a girl. I disagree with it. Um, it's just not who I am, I guess. Um, but I like, why do you, why do you have these like different things where like a girl needs to not be promiscuous, but a guy can have promiscuity. <laughs> Go ahead, you hit it fresh. I want to so, know what these notes he's taking are. Yeah, no, I'm just writing down. I'm <laughs> just writing up. down some stuff. Max fucking sucks. He's a he's a no, 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 no. Because you're actually asking really good questions. Yeah, yeah. So, so generally, I would say most men do want a woman that's not going to be pressed. Uh, you know, that should be there. a standard. Yeah, yeah, that should be a like default. But, but what happens now? It is. It's like women are on par with men. They're making money as well. They're independent. They're boss babes. Oh well, if my man can do it, I can do it too. Here's a problem. We are not the same. Men are different than women and vice versa. So in that sense, if my girl is going out there doing whatever she feels like, for example, probably, you know, bending the rules, smashing different dudes, me as a man of value and character, how does that look on me? It looks terrible because once again, that's my girl. So they're not, they're not going to say, oh, that's uh, Laquisha. They're going to say, that's Precious girl. You know what I mean? But... <laughs> I'm just saying that to say that like most men nowadays that have a character and have built up a, a reputation don't want to be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge red flag for your uh, long-term girlfriend. Okay. So, um, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> how much, how much, how much you, time you got in your memory cards? Yeah. Yeah. You, you have, because you asked some, uh, a couple of questions there. Number one, you asked about a high value man, right? So a high value man is a guy basically that uh, has money, status, respect, impact in the world. And he's fit, right? You have all these things where other men look at you and say, I want to be that guy. That's a high value guy. Far, you know, very rare, hard to come by, right? Because high value means inherently it's rare, correct? So typically, scarcity is tied very closely to. Bring it in. Oh, are you about to have a third energy drink? Oh yeah, we going hard in the paint. This, this man's having six hundred milligrams <laughs> caffeine in, bro. In, the, in an hour. <laughs> I'm still on this one, bro. Still I'll, on this. I'll live, and I got the purple flavor too for all the people that say I hate black people. Anyway, <laughs> I'm black too, man. Just think of, bro. Purple drink. Um, anyway, <laughs> Stick him, bro. and uh, canceled. Yeah, on right. right. cue. Yeah, I, I, need, I need the sound noise like you guys have. <laughs> Stop the show. Stop the show. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So, men. Tip, so, when a man, 
men are based, uh, like I said before, men are only loved and respected under the pretense that they create value, right? And that value typically is consumed by the world, right? You look at someone like Drake, he makes music that everyone loves. You look at maybe a YouTuber that changes lives. Or you look at an athlete that, you know, is able to, you know, dominate in his craft, someone like Kobe Bryant, et cetera, Michael Jordan, right? They were able to go out there, dominate whatever they do and bring value to the world in some degree. That's how men are valued, right? So that's a high value guy. Women, on the other hand, there's no such thing as a high value woman. And what I mean by that, oh my God, it hit me with the misogyny. A woman's only high value under the pretense that she can attract and retain a high value man. There's a reason why women take a man's last name. It's because she goes ahead and absorbs the value that that man created in the world and they refer to her by his last name, not hers. And the reason why I say that is because men are born with zero value and they must create it. And then if they get lucky, they'll become high value. Women, however, are born with value and always have value. So since all women have value, it would be crazy to say, oh yeah, I'm a high value woman. No, you're just like every other chick. Can you lock down a high value guy? That's your value. When two men meet each other, they shake hands and say, what do you do for work? When two women meet each other and shake hands and hug, they say, do you have children? Tell us about your family. Women are social creatures. Men are creatures that create things. That's how it is. Men are to create resources. Women are to create families. So um, so since women are, uh, men are supposed to create, um, <clears throat> create value, right? The woman's job is to lock down the guy because what a lot of girls will say is they'll use the masculine traits to go ahead and try to find their value. Well, I make a bunch of money. I'm successful. I'm a CEO, etc. Unfortunately for women, men don't value these things. We don't care about that. Men don't care about a woman's ability to provide security. Men are interested more in replication value. Can I have children with this woman? Is she attractive? Women are interested in survival value. Can this guy provide for me? Is he strong? Is he dominant? Is he confident? Is he ambitious? Is he a leader of men? All these attraction triggers. So when a girl says, um, Oh, I make money, I'm successful, I'm pretty too. That's the functional equivalent of a guy saying, I'm a bum and I'm broke, but I, you know, I'm really handsome, right? I've done a modeling gig here or there. No, no one cares because men are only valued under the pretense that they provide value. This is why a guy that is fat and ugly can still get a model on his boat versus a dude that modeled at Vogue but has no money. He might get a chick here or there, but he's rarely able to retain them. So men and women have different values that we bring to the table. And all women have value. Only a certain percentage of men have value. See, they're not going to clip that part when I say all girls have value. They're only going to say, oh, no, there's no such thing as a high value woman. But the reality is women always have value because men want women regardless. That's like their, their agency, right? They're born with it. So, um, so that's why I say there's no such thing as a high value woman. A woman is only high value if she can lock down a high value man. Okay. You, you talked about the like the income, right? And it's always about, uh, you know, you guys got to get your money on point. And if a girl has a lot of money, the guys, don't, that's not like a, a preference to them. And you'll always hear, I've listened to a lot. Oh, a lot. one more thing. Yeah. Sorry. And the reason why I say all this is because human beings are put on earth to survive and procreate, right? That's what we're put on earth to do. So everything that a man does a lot of the times when it comes to like creating money, resources, et cetera, it's to become attractive to the opposite gender, Right. So when a woman goes out and says, I make money, I'm successful, et cetera, that's great for her, but that doesn't necessarily make her a sexier counterpart to the opposite gender. So that's why I'm going from a strictly biological sense here of mating. As a man acquires more status and resource, et cetera, he becomes more attractive, he elevates his value, he becomes, and then at some point when he creates impact in the world, he becomes that high value man. A woman though, if she's gonna go ahead and make money and status and resources, whatever, that's like doing a side quest. You're not playing the real game. The real game is be attractive, Find a man that's higher value and get him to commit to you, right? But a lot of girls cope and say, I make my own money. Fantastic. That's like me saying, I'm a bum, but I'm really handsome and I wear nice shoes. Like that doesn't benefit women. Just like a woman that makes money doesn't necessarily benefit men. I, it, goes I always, back, it goes back to the point of, for example, do women know what men really want? No. Okay. I always hear the the on both sides of the table. Oh, and then the cheating thing too, right? You want me to answer that? Yeah. Okay. My bad. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down the money because I want to come back to that. But yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, the the whole because, thing with because, the- Because you, st you state that in a relationship, men can cheat, women cannot cheat. Yeah. I think no one should cheat. Okay. Now here's my thing. I have no problem with guys that want to be monogamous. That's a choice though. But my yeah. point is it, it, I want it to be a choice. Yeah. Right. The problem is this. Most guys are monogamous at a necessity, not because they want to be. And my issue is I want guys, if you're going to be monogamous to your girl, only have sex with one girl. I want it to be your choice. And the girl effectively knows that she can leave. You can leave her at any time and you can go and get another girl because women operate the best when they know that you can leave them or and or you have other women. 
Okay, so, but most guys are monogamous, like, oh, I don't want to lose my girl. They're hanging on by a thread. They're doing everything they can to appease their girl. So I don't have an issue with monogamy, but a man that has sex with a lot of girls is not the same as a woman that has sex with a bunch of dudes. Men have to create their value and actually be able to attract women. You have to put in a lot of work to be able to get to that point. So a girl that has sex with a bunch of dudes is not the same. That's super haram and unacceptable. Right. When a girl has sex. And, and here's the thing. Female, like, it's crazy to me how, like, in today's day and age, like, girls think, like, it's okay to be a hoe. Like, no society ever has, has like, propped women up to be promiscuous. Like, and, oh, well, what about the concubines and stuff? No one respected them. They were effectively slaves. What about the what? Concubines. The co concubines. Like, people say, oh, in the oh. ancient times, there were hoes and, pro you know, concubines and, you know, being prostitutes is the oldest profession in the world. Yeah, but they weren't respected. So, no one, no society ever has ever respected female promiscuity. Okay. And ultimately, let's say, for example. Well, oh, sorry. So but you still didn't say like of why you think a, a guy should get a pass if they do it. Because I know, I know the argument is that guys generally uh, cheat out of lust and girls generally it's more of like yes. premeditated. You have feelings for yeah. them. That's not, there's always going to be outliers to everything. Yeah. But that's the general idea. Yeah. When men, when men cheat and have sex with another girl, they just want to. When a girl cheats on her man, she's effectively lost respect for him and doesn't want to be with him anymore. We cheat for different reasons, but the reason why women cheat is treachery, right? I, I always say females cheating is like first degree murder versus a man cheating is like manslaughter. Oh, I hit somebody while You're I was You're still drinking. going to jail. Yeah, you are. But one goes <laughs> to jail for, one gets yeah. the death penalty. The other one serves five years or 10, 20 years, whatever it may be. But the point is, is that with men, when men cheat, it's not the same. Women cheat emotionally, which is an issue. So, and the other thing too is that we always conflate loyalty, right? Men and women show loyalty differently. Women show loyalty by not fucking anybody else. And the reason for that is because men don't ask for much from women. Be pretty, be attractive, uh, you know, follow my lead and make me a sandwich and I'll probably be happy, right? But, and, and don't be a hoe. But if you, you know, mess up on any of these things, they carry more weight because men don't ask for as much. Women, however, have a whole laundry list of things that they want in a guy. And typically the more attractive they are, the more they demand. So what I'm saying is that a man shows loyalty by being willing to protect her and die for her. That's how a man shows loyalty. Because a dude ain't going to go and protect and die for a chick that he don't give a shit about or he's just smashing. He will do it for his main chick, though, even if he has other side chicks. So men and women show loyalty differently. It's just that women try to say that male loyalty and female loyalty is the same. And the reality is that it's not. It's just that women don't want to... I'm just going to say the uncomfortable truth. A lot of girls want to be able to have a boyfriend while simultaneously behave like they're fucking single. Yeah. That's the reality. They want to keep their Instagram open. They want to still want to go to the club. They still want to be able to go ahead and hang out with their single girlfriends and have a boyfriend at home. Because women know deep down their value typically is derived from the caliber of man that they can attract. So they want to have that guy while simultaneously still being able to be behave like they're single. And what I tell guys is if you have a main chick, she better act like she's your main chick and not uh, allow opportunities or leave open doors for men to come in and fuck up the relationship because it's on the girl, right? To maintain you. Yeah. I, I've never, first of all, I've never uh, in my life had a like, a main chick and a side chick in my, you know, I, 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 that's, that's not, I, that must be a different world because I don't even, no one I've from, I'm from Virginia when I was before social media yeah. to now, I, I, that's something new, new to me. I've never heard of this because it's, it's just not, I guess, traditional. Right? Yeah. It's not, that's not, yeah, I, I understand. And I guess where, when you mentioned, but did that answer your question though, as far as yeah, like, no, the no, sex? no, 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 okay. it does. And your thing is like, you know, Hey, you know, girls with a relationship, they still want to go out. They still want to do these things. They want to almost like act like they're single. But in my mind, you know, I guess the way I go about it is instead of being like, okay, if you're going to be dating me, you're not going to post provocative things. You're not going to the club with your friends. You're not doing this. Yep. My side is more like, hey, why don't you just find a girl that that ha aligns with the same types of like, b not beliefs, but like they don't want to, like when they're dating you, they don't want to go to club every Friday without you. Fantastic. Like that's they, what I'm, that, And that's what I tell guys. That's the girl you want. Because I'm like, why are you, why are you messing around like with these girls that are that are doing all these things and you're trying to almost control them? I'm like, they are they're wild stallions. Let yeah. let them be stallions, right? I'm like, just move on to the next one until you find the girl yeah. that 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 does align with but your specific. The values. reality, the reason why we say that is yeah. because so we live in a society that like promotes girls doing this type of stuff. So yeah. what we tell guys is, 
if you do meet a girl and she's not willing to give these things up for you, she's probably for the streets and you shouldn't take her seriously. Now, what you've said is optimal. Like, yeah, find a girl that just doesn't like to do that stuff. Or if she does want to do it, she wants you to come along. But unfortunately for most guys, that might not be the case. And I don't tell guys to control girls. I tell guys to control their life. And what I mean by that is if you got a chicken, she likes to go to the club all the time. She likes to do this stuff. And you're sitting at home uncomfortable because you're so scared. You're walking on eggshells and you want her to be able to do whatever she wants to do so that you don't lose the relationship. You took an L, you know? Yeah, so, but I, I think it's it's strange to me that guys would get with girls who are like, I I am still going to go to the club every weekend. In my head, it's like, well, why? why, why? But like, notice, you have discernment. You're able to tell, okay, cool, this is not good for me. Most guys, he barely got her. That's the first girl he got in like years or yeah. months. So it's like, oh, I got a girlfriend, finally. So you it's think like, they're just holding on to it? Yeah, they're holding on for, for dear, dear life. life. Yeah, you know, and that's, well, they that's need to work we, on themselves for it. They need to work like deep, which is, deep work which, which is on why go. podcast, Fresh and Fit, become better so you expect more. A lot of guys are what I call placeholder boyfriends. And what I mean by this, oh, and, Lord. or even worse, placeholder <laughs> husbands. And what I mean by that is like, the girl doesn't want to feel like she's single all the time and she still wants to come home to somebody that she could sleep with or whatever, because women do have a deep innate need for, you know, so being social and having someone by their side. Women do look for that security with a guy, but that guy might not check off all the boxes that she wants. So, okay, he's nice and he's caring, but eh, he doesn't make money or he's broke or he's kind of a pussy. So what they'll do is they'll tolerate him. He'll be the boyfriend until she finds something better. And then she'll trade up eventually and leave that guy and go with the other guy. These are why I, I, I feel like this must be like not I feel like in areas like Miami, maybe L.A. that like, I don't think there's that that crazy of extremes where I'm from or where there's are obviously outliers. There are, you know, maybe girls in the middle of the, the country, in the middle of nowhere that are still getting fl flown out and have like Trump, you know, living that life. But I don't come across these types of women that like you think are because they hide in plain sight and also the, what also they do you, is you would never know you would never know when they hide in plain I, sight. I feel like i'm pretty i can i can see through like they'll mm. they'll 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 be good girls where they're at right but then the moment they leave they'll the environment, leave bro uh, demon time demon yeah bro time. yeah bro Bro, why do, you why do you think all these chicks like post themselves like flying out places or going, you know, to vacation destinations or whatever? Like, gr see, girls aren't stupid. They know that, okay, in this immediate geographic area, I can't behave this way because I don't want to deal with the social consequences. So what will I do? I will go to a Miami. I will go to an LA. I will go to a New York, et cetera. No one wants to say this, but I'll just say it. Big reason why girls like traveling is because they want to be hoes. You know that saying where it says in Vegas, what happens in Vegas? Stays in Vegas. Do you know why they made that term? Elaborate. For women to have maximum fun without any accountability. That's why they made that term. You think? I was 100%. reading somewhere that like that women travel alone way more than dudes do. I was, re I, was I forget the article, but like, uh, dude, I'm telling you, man, like with the globalized sexual marketplace, with the internet, um, with social media, all this stuff, like women have more opportunities before. It's just that girls take these opportunities, but they move in silence because girls know deep down that their like value lasagna. is derived. Exactly. They move in silence like lasagna, a little Wayne quote. <laughs> so um, G real G's moving sounds like lasagna, <laughs> yep. uh, uh, right? But they'll just like conceal this stuff because, you know, girls don't want to be judged. So the, what they'll do is they'll just leave their area and go somewhere else where they won't be judged or a different place where nobody knows them. And ultimately, like I was saying earlier uh, on, if a girl respects you and actually loves you, she's not going to do none of this shit. She'll be like, you know what? My man likes this, has these type of boundaries. I respect him. I'm not going to pass Well, I, I guess like what I, the point I was trying to get at is that it, it shouldn't be this and this is like to guys out there, it's like you just keep not sifting through, but keep f going until you find the right one, you know, and that may take a long time, right? Yeah. But like, you, I don't think you should have to have these hard talks and hard arguments be like, look, I know you really want to be in this party phase. Like if you're a guy who isn't, doesn't want your girl to, you know, to stop doing her party phase, then as soon as you realize that she's even like the first ounce of that, but I get what you're saying about oh. how th that's the first hot girl they may have ever gotten. Great, great point you brought up. Yeah. I was going to say, we tell guys all the time, you don't control your girl. You're just in control of your life. And yeah. what I mean by that is if a girl displays certain types of behaviors that you don't necessarily like or whatever, just don't take her serious. I would just let her do what she does. On, yeah. yeah, just let her do whatever. Or if you are in a relationship with her and she does things that you don't approve of, this is why we tell guys all the time, you never ask the girl out. She's got to ask you out, Right. Because at the and I could talk about that more if you want, but you set the terms, and if she wants to go ahead and break those terms, you say, okay, cool, you do what you want. You want to go to the club with your girls, you want to go to Vegas, blah blah. That's fine. When you come back, you're single. Single. I've never in my life said that. To, I, I've never done the like, if you do this, I'm leaving type of thing. But again, I, maybe it's I, powerful, bro. Well, I well, <laughs> I hope I never I, need, I, need I to. Think yeah. How you phrase it was kind of very direct. You can be direct or indirect. So, for example, hey, I only date girls that move like this. 
If you're if you're cool with that, awesome. Let's date. If you're not, let's just have fun and see what see what happens. Yeah, I, I guess my my thing is you know same I'll end this kind of talk on this last thing of you know if like once you start dating a girl like hey I would prefer if my girl maybe wasn't posting very provocative photos on on the daily right because you're like that's I'm like you're in a relationship now, but if I even like started talking to a girl you know and I would look at her Instagram I'd be like absolutely not like I'm not. I'm not going to try to change someone or like have them adapt like how I am. I'm very traditional with my morals and thoughts and values. And like, I'm going to look for a girl that like, I, I feel like as weird as it sounds nowadays, but like you can scroll for two minutes on a girl's Instagram and be like, you streets. <laughs> I was going to like, <laughs> but, you know, traditional. Yeah. <laughs> but Max, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. You can't really tell. And let me explain. So the girl, I'm just an, an elite sifter, dude. So the girl... <laughs> With a thousand followers that post pictures of her in church, you know, in the flower fields, picking cotton. She could be the one, one of the worst demons out there. Like I said, picking you, cotton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ah. <laughs> flowers. Ah. That's what drink, our purple drink. <laughs> the, 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 the point I'm trying to make here is that, like, that woman that may seem good at the, at the outlook could be the worst. I'm just saying you got to see who she, what she's about. Now, generally, of course, if she's posting bikini pictures on yachts, traveling, it's a red flag. But at the same time, she's single. So she's going to do that. Yeah. But she meets a man that she cares and respects. You know what? All this attention I wanted, I don't need it anymore. I got my man that I actually want. And, and there's always outliers, right? Like not all girls that post thoughty pictures are thoughts. And not all girls that post in the church are good girls, right? Yeah. You can meet a girl that has t stupid ass pictures online. But, you know, she'll change and she'll take that shit down once she finds a guy. It really depends on the girl. And if you're, if you're that dude... Girls will change for you. I want guys to be that dude where the girl's in, like dealing with you and she's like, you know what? I'm going to just cut off like all this stuff that I used to do where I would meet guys because this guy is really worth it and I'm willing to do it. I want guys to become that dude where the girl naturally wants to do it because she understands that for me to lock this guy down, that's what it is, which is why it's so important. Also, because guys make this big mistake. The girl always asks, has to ask you. Where are we? Where do we stand? And the reason why I say that is because that puts you in a leverage position where now you can dictate your terms of how the relationship is going to go. You know, because girls always say they've been dating for six months, a year, blah, blah, blah. What are we? Well, well I don't know. What are we? And she's like, well, you know, next, next level, blah, blah, blah. Right. Girls, again, speaking in the covert because they're never going to say, I want to be your girlfriend. You know, where are we? And that's when you say, listen, I commit to girls that aren't going to girls trips, aren't in the club, aren't blah, blah, blah. And you can dictate whatever terms you are, depending on who you are as a man. And it's up to her if she's going to comply or goodbye. And when she says, oh, no, I'm willing to do all that, bam, now you set the precedent. So she knows if she does anything there to fuck up, she will be single. And girls will respect that a lot more. The problem is that a lot of guys, when a guy asks a girl, be my girlfriend, what you've effectively done is you've said, your behavior at this point is adequate enough to secure my, uh, you know, security. <laughs> you, should, you should just say this next yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, to, you know, your, your behaviors now are adequate enough to secure my boyfriendship to you so you could continue to behave that the way that you want and or maybe even add in other bullshit that I might not like in the future. And that's why I tell guys all the time, no, she needs to ask you because now you have the leverage and relationships only work when the man's in the leadership role and has a leverage. The girl always needs to like you more than you like her. That's how it is because women's mating strategy is based upon doubt. So they need to always have no doubt that you're the best guy. And the only way to really know that is she asks you, not the other way around. I want the guy to be better than the girl in every regard and her feel like she has the prize because the man is the prize, not the woman. And someone's going to say- We live in this pussy ass society where we say women are prizes and all this other shit. Fuck out of here. It's the man that's the prize. And the reason why is because we have to bust our ass to create the value to become the prize so you get to go ahead and enjoy this. But if you fuck up, you're single. And someone's, someone's going to say, for example, Myron Fresh, how do I know that she's the one for me? Time. That's, yeah. your, that's your best factor is time. That's all you can really do, time. So. I, I think- it's it's interesting hearing all of this because like it's well, crazy I know it, it's it, 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 well no it, it's just wild because I think back to when I was you know out of college you know just, you know I had a couple of serious relationships kind of back to back and dealt with a lot of heartbreak and all that stuff and there wasn't this like all right let me get my uh, my rule book out here and how I'm supposed to be oh she this is red flag like red flag and yeah. now maybe I'm just I live in this la la fairy tale world where I just like think that you know, this happened for me and it's, it's out there for every guy. But like my current girlfriend, when I met her, it was just something about her was light years different than every girl, every girl that I've met. And then from that day forward, it was just like, we clicked and there has been Z we've been dating for 15 months now or something. I wish I probably know this I'm about to, about to be up on 15 <laughs> months. And it's like, there's no red flags, yeah. like nothing. And, and there's no, but Max, nothing. Notice you have the experience to discern 
okay, she's perfect for me. Once again, my metric earlier, 50 girls. That could be 100 girls. Who knows? Yeah, Nowadays, I feel like it stresses guys out thinking that like there's this protocol list. Yeah. I mean, it's not a hard and fast like 50 girls. But what I'm saying is that by 50, you Generally. should have a good idea of um, female nature and how women move so that you're able. The biggest reason why I want guys to do that is so they identify sluts. Do not commit to sluts. It will make your life miserable. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think just I think guys just need to get to a point where they can see what like the type of girl that a girl is. Yeah. Like yeah, you it, just you can tell you need to be person. able to you need to have you need to be able to identify girls that are in different phases in their life and like which girls are worthy of a relationship, which which one which ones aren't. And the other thing too, Max, right? You're yeah, I would consider you a high value guy. Like you you have yeah. all these things in place. We did it. Right? Yeah. So, you know, multimillionaire, successful entrepreneur, owned several businesses, been successful on YouTube, been in the game for a long time. People know who you are. So a byproduct of that is women are naturally gonna behave better around you, right? Because they know, like, okay, this is a top tier guy. So you've done a lot of the work up front. So you don't have to do a lot of the work on the back end. What mm -hmm. a lot of guys do is make the cardinal mistake and they have to put in all this work on the front end to get the girl, but they haven't done the work on the back end and then the girl's going to go ahead and be able to leave them earlier because they didn't do the work on the front end like they should have. Okay. Yeah. I want to circle back one one thing. Sure. I, I feel like we went deep into that topic right there, but I want to go back to the money, money thing. Money, money, money. Right. <laughs> People love talking about money. Sure. I've heard it from both sides when uh, we'll say... a in a, in a relationship with a guy and a girl and the girl makes more money. I've heard, but both sides, the guy will, it'll be like the joke of, I'll be a stay at home dad. Oh, I don't care if my girl makes more money. And then on the flip side, you hear the girls that says, I don't care if my guy makes less than me. <laughs> do, do <you> th <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> you, but I, I've heard girls on your podcast say that. They're like, I don't care if the guy, you know, they're full of shit. Makes, Max, they're on camera. They're full of shit. They're going to lie. It's the camera. Trust that, me. Why do you think, bro, when girls lie, we have this little segment where we put hats Caps. on for cap. Yeah, no cap. Yeah. But but here, I guess here's the question of that. Like, so there, there are sure. the, both sides of sure. like, you've heard the guys joke about it. Like, I'll be a stay home dad. I don't care. Yeah. Huh? I love that. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the, the question would be why, like, why do you think that if a girl makes more money, it is a problem like that, that it can't work out. So what happens is when a girl earns more money, right? What, what typically happens is by default, she's going to be put in an authority position over the, in, over the male. And when a woman is in an authority position over the man that puts her in her masculine energy, a woman can't be happy when she's in her masculine energy. She wants to be with a guy that can lead her. So when a woman's in a leadership role, she's going to lead you all right to the end of that fucking relationship. That's why we tell guys all the time, you need to make more money than your girl. And if you guys are making equal, you need to start making more than her. Because unfortunately, whoever makes money a lot of times dictates the terms of the relationships. Now, is it always like that? Are there guys out there that have enough game and charisma and charm and masculinity, even if they'll make less than their girl, to still assert dominance? Absolutely. But, not, but, not most, but, guys but most guys can't. Yeah. And it is a big predicator on divorce. Actually, matter of fact, when a girl does make more money than her man, it significantly increases the chances of divorce. I, I guess the, the, what, I, what I would imagine if, if my partner made more than me, it would almost feel, not, not deliberately maybe or not, it would... But it almost, I don't want to say resentment, but I feel like it'd be this, this like carrot that's like held or like this thing that's held above your head that, that like, I, I make more money than you, but I feel, but I feel like if a guy makes more, do they have that same kind of power? Like I Hell can no. Control? And the reason why is because okay. when men, right? So when men make money, they say, damn, this is awesome. Now I can provide for a family. They want to. Right. They want to. When women make money, they say, I'm independent of men. Think of all the girls that say, I'm strong and independent. I don't need no man. I'm a boss, baby. That's what girls do. When, when women have money and they're successful, they say, all right, yes, I'm free from men. When men make money and are successful, they say, damn, I can get girls and I can support them. So we look at money very differently. I've always said that women are terrible provisioners. They're not comfortable with providing security and provisioning to a man. Men, on the other hand, are okay with providing provisioning and security to a woman. Women, when they make money, it's their money. When a man makes money, it's our money. That's how a lot of relationships operate. And what is the number one cause of divorce? Probably financial problems. Money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and I wish it wasn't like this way, uh, this way, man. But the reality is when women have leverage and women make more money than you, et cetera, they're terrible fucking people. They really are. I, something that to I, their man, at least. Yeah, <laughs> something that I, I worry about with this whole, work, like, kind of a- Space. We'll call it the, the revolution. You know, okay. It's a revolution, bros. Ziz said that. Yeah, it is a revolution. It's a freaking revolution. Waking guys up from being simp's. Yeah. It, it, what, what what would you define a simp as? It's always like well, it around. stands for sucker idolizing mediocre pussy. That's what the actual <laughs> term stands for. But I thought I thought it was an abbreviation of like or a shortening of like simpleton. Like that a, could be like it a, too. A common 
that could be it as well. But tip, typically that's what the acronym stands for. But what I would say is simp is a, a guy that doesn't understand his value, overvalues women, and doesn't get reciprocal value from a female that he's dealing with. This could be a guy in the friend zone. That could be a guy paying for OnlyFans. That could be a guy that's dealing with a girl that has no interest in him and wasting his time and resources. It's a man that doesn't get value back from girls. So for me, for example, right, when I'm dealing with a girl, you know, I, I have certain tasks that I need her to do. Help me with my business, uh, you know, clean the place up, help, you know, and I don't ask for much. But if a girl isn't doing that, then it's not reciprocated value and I just pretty much kick her out. And to add to your point as well, what is a simp? Is someone that's dealing with women, however, no matter how they're treated, how they're like looked at, for example, let's say you get slapped, you know, she doesn't respect him, cheats on him. If he stays there, he's also a simp too because being able to walk if, away if as a man. I, yeah, if I ever got slapped, I'd be, no, I'd no. be out. <laughs> you'd you'd yeah. be surprised how many men are with women nowadays that get Bro. respected. We were in Vegas one day, right? Uh, we were, uh, I think we were doing like a, like a, a conference. Went for a conference. Dude, we were there by the slot machines, right? This woman was next to her man. They were arguing. All we heard was, <laughs> we're like, this can't be serious. But once again, that's a culmination of a bunch of points in their dating relationship where he lo she lost uh, respect re respect for him. Yeah. And along the way, like, you know what? Damn, this nigga is no longer worth my, my time or, or my energy. So I'm treating like shit. And once again, that dynamic right there, if you can't walk away, what are you doing? You're a simp. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many times like guys are in relationships with girls that don't have sex with them anymore. They berate them. They nag them. They slap them. They are constantly talking shit cheat to on them. And them. a lot of the cheat on him. And that a lot of times that comes from the guy not having his shit together. Yeah. That yeah. that's an outward manifestation of her frustrations for him being an inadequate leader. Just yeah. disrespect across the board. All yeah. Across. Do you think that traditional values are long gone? Yeah, bro. Pretty much. Yeah. Really. Yeah, so we live now what I call a deregulated sexual marketplace. And what that means is that it's pretty much a free-for-all. And since we live in a deregulated marketplace, right, the girls pick the men, right? And the family isn't involved anymore. Like, the girls are picking the guys. And what are girls going to naturally gravitate toward, towards? They're going to go towards the top 5, 10, 20% of guys. This is why one in three men right now is like a sex or hasn't had sex in a year or is a virgin. So since women are in the, in the wheel, right, in the driver's seat of who they want to pick, which is fantastic, it's great, um, that leaves a lot of men as virtually invisible. And yeah, traditional relationships are gone because women are no longer traditional. They make their own money. They're more promiscuous than ever before. A lot of them can't cook. A lot of them don't clean. A lot of them, if they, you tell them any of these things, they say, I, I'm not a slave, right? What feminism has effectively done is it's told women that it's okay to be enslaved to your job and a business, but not. But if, you're, you know, if you serve your man or your children, that's slavery for real. They've tricked them. They're a slave for the corporate world, but if they do anything for their man or their children, that's considered slavery. So go enter the workforce instead. You're a pick me. What what do you consider like a what do you consider like a, a traditional relationship? Guy guy is the breadwinner. Woman works only if she wants to. He earns the majority of the money and takes care of all the bills. And if she wants to make some side money to do whatever she wants to do, that's cool. But she stays home with the kids. And you know, that I think that's the best way to to raise a family and children. And I think the nuclear family is quickly dying in the United States, which is why we're, you know going into degeneracy. And I know for all the people, well, Myron, hold on, that doesn't make sense. You're talking about nuclear families, but at the same time, guys, guys gotta have sex with 50 girls, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because unfortunately, there's a lot of riffraff in the sexual marketplace. And for you to be able to figure out a girl that's worth it, you gotta do it. Like the game has changed and guys have to adapt. And I wish it wasn't this way, but the a lot of the buffers that used to you know, contain the fuckery are gone. Religion, family, two-parent households, um, shame, all this stuff is effectively destroyed thanks to the world that we're in. People are more concerned with Kim Kardashian's body and being thoughts and listening to city girls than being good women and being good mothers. So since that's the world that we're in, guys have to be way more intelligent about how they move. It used to be you could meet a girl and she already had traditional values instilled in her from her father and her mother and religion and she was a good girl off rip. But nowadays you have to go out there and find a good girl or train her to be a good girl for you. Yeah, that's another thing too that's controversial. We say you need to train your girlfriend. Whoa! But if I say, you know, you should be going to the gym and train to be get a better body or train for a job, they don't have a problem with that. But when I say you need to train your girlfriend, they say, oh, that's fine and misogynistic. No, it's not because we live in a society nowadays that incentivizes women to be terrible girlfriends, terrible mothers, and in turn, be a terrible mate for you as a man. So you have to train a girl a lot of the times to be the best woman for you. And once again, women don't know what men actually want. And as a result, they do whatever they feel like. So if that's going to be your girlfriend, hey, this is what I require for you to be, to be, to be a part of my lifestyle. Now, here's the funny part. The woman still wants you to be a traditional man. <laughs> she still wants you 
if someone breaks in to protect her. She At still all wants times. you. Yep. Oh shit. She still wants you to make more money than her. She still wants you to be dominant. She still wants you to be assertive. She still wants you to be confident. She still wants you to have all these traditional masculine traits while she simultaneously absolves herself of her traditional feminine traits. It's not a good trade for a lot of guys. You always you always say the uh, a lot of your episodes recently you always talk about the nuclear family. What is that exactly? Two parents, Two parents, kids, and a dog. White, white picket fence, the American dream, pretty much. The traditional nuclear family, golden which is retriever. Yeah, there you go, or a golden doodle. Vital. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Times yeah, have changed. Dude. Yeah, man. But like, but the nuclear family is dying in the United States, and feminism is a big part of it. So, you know, um, nuclear families are how the United States became the superpower that it is now, right? But the nuclear family is dying. You know, you have more single mothers now than ever before. A lot of um, people, a lot of people nowadays, a lot of adults grew up in a single parent household. And it just, it, you know, we, and we know single motherhood, single mothers are probably one of the biggest contributors to a failed society. You look at prison rates, you look at people criminals. that are criminals, drug addicts, um, homeless people, et cetera. Degeneracy typically comes from a single mother household because they didn't have a father there to protect them. I've always said fa good fathers keep sons out of jail, daughters off of stripper poles because your father is supposed to be the first line of defense to let you know that there's consequences for your fuck ups. Right. If your dad catches you smoking weed, he slaps you and says, hey, don't do that before a cop goes ahead and slaps cuffs on you instead. And now you're a product of your society. Right. So that's why it's so important to have um, positive masculinity and have a father in the place, because women are great at nurturing their children, but they're terrible at disciplining their children and letting them know how the, how the world really works. And how, some yeah. conspiracy here as well. How do you destroy a great nation? Not through really war or through like, you know, missiles of destruction. It's That'll from, also do it. But that too, but the smart way is from the inside out. The Trojan horse. TikTok, music, social media. Culture's dying, man. Do you That's why China doesn't allow any of that bullshit in. Do you think that with this whole like revolution that it makes every guy think that every girl is going to be like this kind of extreme like a problem or like you're not going to find a traditional girl because I would I would assume I, I think that most people and I get why well, I can't speak for everyone, but I would assume that a lot of people probably, even though they may not act like it, want the traditional future for themselves. Yeah. And in their in their twenties, they may not see it. They're like, no, I'm gonna have fun. I want to do whatever. I'm gonna, you know, no, 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 no. But I feel like you know, it's kind of like the saying, like no one wants to be seventy and alone kind of thing. Yeah. You know, you want to have. And then the big argument for uh, uh, that you know, Andrew Tate talked about it. It was saying that, you know, if you don't have a child, like to have children to like, like almost like why, 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 what's the point? Yeah. Um, and you know, there, there are some people that maybe don't have kids, but that's I, why we're put on earth. And that's why I said a high value woman doesn't exist unless she has a high value man. And most people probably want that traditional life. And, but I think the, the problem is that like now all guys think that that's, it's almost like an outlier to find a traditional girl where I don't necessarily think that is, I don't think it's some you know, finding Mew in the freaking you know, forest, right? It's, it's like, they're out there. You just are kind of like, you're in the areas where all the, you know, ratatats are, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that's a good point. I get what you're saying here. However, once again, right? We're in the economy of, for example, be independent, be successful as a woman. All these things are pushing women towards a certain agenda. Now, there are good girls out there, like we said earlier, but a far and few between. So we're saying, look, at least be a man of value. So when you do find this woman, you know what the value is. And once again, this is 50 girls earlier, right? For me, it might take 50, it might take you 100. The point is that like, it doesn't matter what it takes. Is that you get to that point where you can understand, okay, cool. She's good for me for my lifestyle. I'll take her in, pretty much. Do, do you guys, uh, what's your thoughts on being with one person for the rest of your life? <laughs> Once again, it's a choice. <laughs> so his strategy is different from my strategy. I think personally speaking, that's how you know uh, people see themselves being for the most part. However, once again, as a man, it's a choice. You can have 10 wives, five wives, or one, but it should be your choice solely. I'm going to have multiple wives. No way I'm going to have one chick. Okay, here's my <laughs> my debate on that, though, sure. is... I've, I, you, you can have like your, your views and your values or like, you know, whatever. I'd, I'm not going to be with one person regardless of, I'm not even really to talk about like marriage. We'll just talk about like just being with one person, being monogamous with one person, yeah. raising a family. I'm cool with that if it's the man's choice. Okay. Now. L not the woman's. I feel like you, you're, you're really strongly feel this type of way, but do you think it's going to be difficult to find 
one, two, three, four, ten wives that are okay with, 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 with that as well. What I've learned is that women will share you if you're high value enough. They absolutely will. Mm-hmm. They won't admit it. Then maybe they'll be ashamed about it. But girls will share you if you're high status enough and if you got your stuff together. Because it is so rare to find a guy like that. Yep. It sounds stressful to have multiple women. Yeah, it is a pain. I ain't going to lie. But, hey, it is what it is. It comes, it comes with the territory every now and then. This is why it's so important. Because you were saying before, right? Like, you know, should guys, you know, treat women this way or blah, blah, blah. What I always say is that assume she's a hoe until she proves to you otherwise. When you go into it, like, okay... Prove me wrong that you're not one of these typical like modern day women. I feel like it's such a, n- n- not like a, not <laughs> like a, term. yeah, it's, it's such Let a. Let me explain why. It, it seems like such a, like. A negative because, way to go because, into it? Because, well, because y- y- y'all are different type of caliber of men compared to the people that are watching you guys, right? Mm-hmm. And if, and if these guys who are, you know, have had one girl their whole life and are very shy, awkward types of people, they're going to like start their life with having that mentality and just had this like negative look and it'd be like every girl is bad until she proves me right like and i'm more of I well guess- the reason why i say that th- th- there's a reason the yeah. reason why i say is that she's got to prove i always say she belongs to the streets unless she proves to you otherwise the reason why i say that is because we live in a society that pretty much tells girls to behave however they want and do all this other thought shit shit so what i tell guys is you need to date from a risk mitigation standpoint and why do i say this i say that because as a man you take all the risk when you get in relationships a lot of times if you get married to a girl, your money's on the line. Your house is on the line. Your children is on the line. Alimony's on the line. Child support's on the line. So as a man, you need to go in eyes wide open, right? Ears wide open and know what the hell you're getting yourself into, especially if it's going to be some type of long-term relationship like marriage where there's serious consequences for the fuck up. So I tell guys, operate from a risk mitigation standpoint. Assume every girl you date is a whore until she proves to you otherwise. And it's on the girl. Honestly, we put way too much of a burden on performance on men. Men have to go out there, become attractive, go to the gym, make money, learn game, learn uh, how to be a masculine man, be a leader, etc. We need to put some performance on the women. The women need to come in and prove why they deserve commitment. But we live in this crazy ass world where we let women go ahead and behave however they want and still feel like they deserve a top tier guy. Fuck that shit. Girls need to perform too. Too many women are way too entitled and think they deserve a man that, quite frankly, a lot of them don't fucking qualify for. And you don't see the guys that are divorced, not living in a halfway house, can't afford to pay rent, can't afford to be a man again. Because once again, they married the wrong wrong woman or they were with the wrong woman in a relationship. And because of that now, they're back to square one or even worse. Most girls deserve an average man, but they think they qualify for a top tier dude. And the reality is there's not enough of these top tier dudes to go around. So the girl's got to make a decision. Either A, you share one of these top tier guys with other women, or B, settle with a guy on your level. Most of the time, they elect for the former. If, if your mentality is like this, when you have kids, you want to have kids, right? Yeah. How many do you want to have? Yeah, probably two with each. Two with each girl? Yeah. That's 20 girl, 20 <laughs> kids? <laughs> no, no, no. That's, uh, you said that's you want to have 10 wives. That's eight. No, no, no. Four. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how, how what do you think will happen with like with your kids when you're like yeah i have multiple moms do you think you have to like is that gonna be the new wave you think well it, okay that's a great question i think inadvertently it is becoming that way what's happening is that as women are making more money rising up the ranks right thanks to feminism they're earning more money going up in social status etc the amount of men that qualify for these girls in their eye are in their eyes continue to dwindle so what's going to happen is this. Either we're going to have an abundance of single women, which I think that's obviously a possibility. It's said somewhere around 50% of women are going to be single by, by 2030. Yep. Or women are going to have to learn to accept and be poly- in polygamous relationships with men that have multiple women. I just can't, I, I just can't wrap my head around. Is polygamy, would that, that would be... Yeah, multiple, is that like polyamorous? Yeah, is yeah, that like pretty, that type of world? Polygamy, like, yeah, basically like yeah. a dude with multiple chicks. And that's what's going to happen because thanks to feminism, women earn their own money and their own security. So... As women earn more money and more status, doors close. As men earn more money and more status, doors open. So since there's not going to be enough of these men to go around, guess who's the the leverage? The guys are going to have the leverage. What feminism feminism has effectively done is it's actually given all the power and leverage (laughs) to the small percentage of men at the top. They're the ones that have the real choice with all the girls, and all the girls are fighting for these same men. If you ask a girl, what do you want in a guy? They typically describe the same goddamn archetype of guy every single time. Tall, rich. There's a reason Successful, why 50, popular, yeah. all that would be. there's a reason why Fifty Shades of Grey is the most popular book with women. That guy, right, Christian Grey, 
exemplifies all the traits that women look for. Masculine, dominant, strong, assertive, doesn't to tolerate bullshit, is able to have sex with them and treat them like an object. Th these are all things that women will never admit, but they like and they admire in men. There's going to be only a small percentage of men that actually meet all these requirements. And as women become more and more successful, less of these guys are around. Guess what they do? They start sharing all the chicks. And this has already been proven in a lot of uh, major cities where a small percentage of men are fucking a, a majority of the girls that are sexually active. And to an extreme level, Dan Bozerian, Andrew Tate, Myron Gaines, good example. <laughs> <laughs> like girls will share you if, 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 you know, and I'm open about it, right? So like I tell girls all the time, I'm not going to be monogamous. I'm going to have multiple women. And a lot of times they accept it. Because I'm honest about it. Now, the difference between me and a lot of other guys is other guys aren't honest about it. They're just going to fuck other girls anyway. But I tell women, accept the fact that if you're with a higher status guy, he's going to fuck other girls. You're not that special and you're never going to sexually satisfy your guy by yourself. I, that's, it's wild. I mean, it's like I've, I get it. I, it's, it's a wild Unless they run into you and you know you're monogamous, but <laughs> most guys are, at your level are not going to be monogamous. You're one of the rare ones. It's a choice. I think I- At least to our knowledge. I think there are. I, I very much I am. I, I, I think it's- I think it's more common than you think. I think it's just certain areas you see, like, I don't know. It's kind of like when I go back to, you know, you know, don't let a, like a girl going to make you go broke, making you buy her Birkin bags and stuff. I, no matter what the caliber of girl that I would ever, ever be with, like, I'm not that type of guy that would just buy expensive gifts to just to be like, oh, it's a Wednesday. Here's a, here's a Louis Vuitton bag. That's just not who I am. Right. But so, that's lame. You, you might not be, but a guy she dated from before is like that. So now she expects you to do the same thing, well, roughly. I, I just, I guess in, in my world, I'm like, I don't know how you'd find women that would be okay with sharing. You have to find a very specific type of type of woman, right? No, um, the thing is, so how I do it is I'm just honest. So they take, it's, uh, and I have a very take it or leave it attitude with women. So it's like comply or goodbye. Like, you know what I mean? That's kind of just how I do it. And it's, it's amazing how much women respect it when you're honest about it and you let them know. And the thing is, is that most guys are pussies. And they're not going to do this and they're going to lie or whatever. So a lot of girls look at it like, okay, I have two evils here. I can either get with the guy that's going to sell me the dream and say he's going to be monogamous to me even though he's going to fuck other girls. Or I could be with this guy who's going to be honest about it and it is what it is. At least you know. At least you know. Yeah, but you, I feel like your difficulty is going to come when, I guess the argument is that like it's already hard enough to find a really good traditional girl that in you know, 50 years from now, she's still that great traditional girl. You guys have, you know, built a great life together, right? And because when you're, you know, I don't know, 50, 60, it's gonna be, you're, you're not gonna like get, get back in, out in the field, right? You're like, I'm ready, I have, I have kids, I'm, they're adults, I'm kind of like ready to, to chill a little bit. You're gonna have to deal with that with five people and hope that you have like five, five girls that are gonna be fine down the road. They will be, and the reason why is because I've said this before, another controversial take, women mature only when they stop getting sexual attention from men. I'll explain what I mean by this. As a girl ages and gets older, her, her value drops off precipitously. Contrary to what these feminists want to say or whatever. Oh, no. I, mean, I, I, I gain value as I age. I, I age like wine. I age like wine. Fuck out of here. You age like milk, milk. bitch. And the reason why is because <laughs> men don't value older women. Men universally, between 18 to 60 years old, value women between 18 to 24 years old. Those are the peak years for most women. Now, are there some girls out there that are able to push the clock back? Maybe they still look good at 32, 35 because Botox. they go to the gym and take care of themselves. Maybe some surgery, whatever. Of course. But at the end of the day, men naturally look for younger, younger women in general. So what I've realized is that women typically start to wisen up once they hit 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and they start to, I want to settle down. Why? Because they know deep down in the back of their minds, their sexual market value is perishable and they need to find the guy before it becomes too late. Right now, the cardinal mistake they make is they don't realize is that by the time they're 30, it's pretty much almost over. But girls typically wisen up, right, when they get older and they don't get the same sexual attention from men. I've always said it. Girls really realize that it, <laughs> girls mature when they start paying for their own drinks at the fucking bar. Okay. And then they realize, damn, okay, I can't get away with the shit that I used to do when I was 21. Now that I'm 31, I need to move differently. I need to be more valuable to a guy if I do get him. And I need to start maybe changing. But some girls understand this and a lot of girls don't, which is why by the time you meet a girl that she's 31 years old, that's why like typically if I made it, meet a girl in her 30s, I just fuck her and don't take her serious because they have so many bad habits ingrained in them that they're not going to change. Do you think you're always going to be this aggressive mindset? Aggressive in what way? Just like... This is how I feel. You're not going to change it. This is it. This is the way it is. Like that type of uh Oh, like like this 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 take take it or leave it mentality. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, militant, militant. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because I'm sure you weren't. I mean, I'm assuming before, <laughs> like five years ago, were you this uh, 
enlightened, I guess? No, no, no. Five years ago, I wasn't to this level. I was enlightened, but not to this degree. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely not. No, I'm not. Because th this is the only thing that really that women respect is when you're like, this is the way it is. I'm, I'm not going to compromise for you. I, I guess I, I understand everything. And, and that's why while I have different different takes than, you know, uh, people in this world, right? Um, it's still, I still find it very interesting to listen to your guys' podcast, you know, Rolo Tomasi, mm -hmm. um, you know, even some Andrew Tate stuff. And again, yeah. there, there's, there's some extreme shit that I'm like, no. Then there's some stuff I'm like, oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Okay, I see your point on that, even if I don't agree with it. Yeah. Um, it but as someone who has like just, I guess I just, I don't, I don't think like that. I think I'm just, I don't like analyze too deep. I guess the worry that I have is for like the generation of men is they're going to grow up like all trying to be an Andrew Tate and be the, the, the crazy aggressive. The know, world would be a better like, place. Pew, you. Yeah. Like, well, the, here's the thing. The world would be a better place if it was like that. And I'll explain why. It seems angry. No, see, it's not about being angry. Well, obviously we're on a podcast. We're talking shit, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not running around. You Bitch, you're useless. I'm not saying that. I, I want to see how you talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you eat dinner at a restaurant with, like, with, with <laughs> one of your many girlfriends. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, wife too. Go do this. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it's, it's really what it is, is that if more guys like had a backbone, right, and were direct and didn't let women walk all over them, we'd be in a better place. The reason why, and here's the thing, women love it when guys are able to tell them no, but enough guys don't tell girls no. And this is why so many women are actually miserable and sad. We have the highest level of women on antidepressants and, and medication than ever before. It's because men are no longer masculine. Guys are pussies. Women want to be able to be, be, be able to be put in their place by men. This is why a lot of times they do something called the shit test. They'll test your masculinity. Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Or they'll try to switch it up on you, whatever. And you got to be able to look her dead in the eye and be like, no, that's not what we're doing. We're doing this. And then back of her mind, she'll be like, oh my God, this guy's so hot. I'm going to suck his dick later. Like women want a guy <laughs> that can look them in the face and say, no, not enough guys are doing that. I guess I, I don't get into relationships where like I get in these predicaments. Yeah. But, see, but, you, but, you do but, it differently. But you're just, I, you're just I, not going to tolerate I, it. I do a heavy vet before I ever get to the point where I need to get in this conversation Max, of like, this is how it's going to be. That is you. Most men don't do that. But, and, but in my head, like in y'all's head, y'all are saying like every guy needs to be eyes wide open with like this type of mindset. I guess in my mind, I'm like, it ain't that deep. Just find a good girl and you'll be okay. And there's not, it, there's not was, enough of these good girls, man. If it was there, that, there, well, if there's, it was there's that, not enough. There, there is. If it was that easy, there'd be no OnlyFans, no porn, no strip club because, oh, simple. Just find a good, a good girl and then you're going to go. Yeah. I'm just saying, for example, most guys, to find out one good girl, it's going to take some time. And most girls put the act of being a good girl. Like like men sell success, women sell purity. And if the guy doesn't have experience or doesn't understand how women really operate, he won't be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Because there's a lot of girls that like, they did some host shit in the past and they come in and they put in this front, like, I'm a good girl now, blah, blah, blah. Because they realize like, damn, that life isn't really satisfying. And for a lot of girls, it isn't, right? Running around and getting plowed by dudes all day and partying and all, doing drugs and all this shit. That, that might work for a year or two, but a lot of girls like kind of wake up and say, okay, this isn't good. I want security from one guy. That's why it's called a hot girl summer, not a hot girl life. Girls can't be hoes long term. They just can't. I, what I appreciate about your guys' podcast is that you're very, while you have your opinions on things and whether whoever watches agrees, disagrees, strongly agrees, strongly disagrees, um, you're very like, this is how I feel. You can either, it's kind of like the, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. You can stay with me or get out. It's, it's, this is my opinion. And I'm very, uh, you know, I'm not going to change my mind. And that's the one that I, I always, I see it a lot throughout the podcast, but the one, the, the episode that I saw that I was like, whoa, was <laughs> y'all had Waka Flocka on and he just disagreed with something that was going on and he was like, I'm leaving. And you didn't even, it didn't even phase you that Waka Flocka was like, that you had on the show, which was a big deal that he was like, I'm leaving. And you're like, all right, man, see you later. All right, girl. So like, what were you saying? I was like, <laughs> this man didn't even get phased. It wasn't like, bro, bro like, hold on. Let, 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 let me like talk girl. Like, you know, like take over for a second. I'm gonna go, let me go talk to him. You were just like, all right, like, it, it, that was wild to me. Yeah, you gotta, you just gotta be yourself and not care. And women did, respect. Did you that. have any follow up after that? Or I spoke to him after. Uh, he, listen, man, I didn't day. He had a great time on the show. Um, he had to leave. He had for a show. Other reasons as well. So it wasn't just because y'all were just going too hard in the paint. <laughs> That's literally, what was going literally, on, man. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, yeah. walk to school, man. He's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just, um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I look at it like you know, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything, and. When people challenge my views or like, I don't agree with that ever, I can articulate exactly why I move the way that I do with women. And it's all typically biologically based. 
The reason why I don't compromise with women is because women don't like guys that compromise with them because women want a leader, right? If you're, a, if you're with your boss or whatever, or, you know, you're in a battlefield and the, you know, the commanding officer says, yo, we got to do this. He, you know, you're not going to be like, oh, well, I think we should do this. And he turns back around and says, oh, you know what? That's a good idea. You know what? Let's do it. No, he's going to say, shut the f up and follow what I said, soldier. That's how it needs to be with women. And women respect that. Because, and this is what I mean when I say that we live in this clown world, right? We tell women that they're strong and independent and, you know, they're capable of being leaders and doing everything that a man can do. But the reality is they don't respond favorably to men that actually follow that bullshit advice. They respond well to men that don't think that they're equal to them. They respond to men that act and behave as if they are superior to them. Women want a superior. I tell guys, be that superior because what they say they're attracted to and what they're aroused by are two different things. And what women say that they want and what they actually respond to favorably are two different things. We tell guys, this is what women really want that mainstream media will never tell you because they're going to say it's misogynistic, sexist, blah, 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 which is ridiculous because sexism actually only benefits women. It actually hurts men. That's a whole other argument. But the point is, is that Society has lied to men about what is actually attractive and what they need to do to keep a girl in line. It sounds like we're at fucking war every day. It is, bro. I, 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 wish, I wish it wasn't like that. But like the thing is, as a man, a, a masculine man, is you have to constantly be in your, in, in your masculine frame and assert dominance over your girl to let her know this is how it is. Etc. Because you have a bunch of propaganda. You got Kim Kardashian. You got City Girls. You got all this bullshit media telling women do this, act like this, blah blah blah. But and you have to basically combat that by being a man. And here's the thing: she's gonna respect you even more so for standing ten toes down on your belief system. And this is how it is. I'm not compromising for you. I tell guys all the time: women are like terrorists. We don't negotiate with them. My <laughs> way or the fucking highway. That's how this is. And women love that shit. Because they know if I can stand up to you, I can stand up to an intruder. If I can stand up to you, I can stand up to some guy that treated you poorly um, at the bar or touched you or whatever it may be. I could smack him in the fucking face because I'm not going to sit and bend to you. But if you bend to your girl, she loses respect for you. Women don't even know what the fuck they want to eat for lunch. And guys are over here taking their advice. Fuck out of here. These girls don't know anything. And even deeper, there's a war going on, but on masculinity. And like, like I said earlier, how do you destroy a nation? For the most part, you can use bombs, whatever, like I said earlier. But... What's happening out to the U.S.? Inside job, TikTok, social media. It's all it's all the, the agenda, man. Look, man. Shit's wild out here. This might be messed up, but women can't lead anything. There's no matriarchy that stood the test of time. You know, patriarchies work, matriarchies don't. That's why every matriarchy was dominated and killed by men. And my thing is this. I'm not saying all this to say women are terrible people and all this other shit. No. I want guys to be in their masculine so they could provide the best for their girl. I'm a big proponent on... Men leading families, providing for their women. If she wants to work, it's elective. It's not mandatory. Um, but you need to be that guy. And you need and for the girls that you're with, right, that you that you actually are dating or taking seriously and they provide value to them, give them the world. I tell girls all the time, be a gentleman, but it's got to be selective. It's got to be selective. You got to pick the right girls to be a gentleman too. If the girl deserves it, she deserves it. Treat her well. You know, she's a princess, but she's got to earn that shit. A lot of guys give women treat, princess treatment without them earning it. I'm just, my brain is <laughs> filling up, dude. <laughs> to wrap it all up, what do you think about w women in the society right now? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, like, so I think this has been super, super interesting. And, and again, something that I want, I, I tried to preface it at the beginning is that um, I got a lot of people that were like, hey, you know, Max, like just, you know, be careful getting these guys on the, on the show. I think it is totally fine for people to have opinions, even if they're extreme, and to have a, a common debate, not in a debate, it's a discussion, right? Back and yeah. forth. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, it's just like, hey, like, oh, okay, I, I understand why you feel this way. I don't necessarily agree with that. Or I, I, that's not how I live my life. You know, I'm, you're not going to change me. I'm not going to change you. But I don't yeah. feel like you have to kind of like attack. I've seen a lot of shows you guys go on. One I was, was watching recently, and I feel like they brought you on just to like attack you on the show was the uh, flagrant, flagrant. Fla flagrant. There you go. I knew uh, it. We knew it. Yeah. With Andrew Schultz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, I mean, it wasn't Andrew. I, I, I never knew this podcast existed until today, but, like, it was everyone else. Like, I mean, do, well, do, what, what do y'all do to, like, well, people who are just... Like, again, I, I'm I'm probably disagree with a lot of what you guys... Uh, not, not like, I don't want to say stand for. I disagree with a lot of, like, the way you perceive the world. Okay. A little bit, right? Um, but there are some people that are very, like, no. No, wrong, wrong. I'm gonna attack you, and I feel like that's what like happened on like that podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um. You want to take it first, and I can. Yeah. I, I would just say that whole podcast itself was an attack on us because they saw our point of view and they felt like you know what, you guys are wrong. 
and we're going to prove you wrong. Apologize on our show. Yeah. Well, you know how we rock. We're like, no, this is how we stand. This is our stance on it. Take it or leave it. So they want us to apologize on their show, basically. It's weird. Long story short, though, uh, Andrew was being impartial because he didn't want to be the bad guy. He put his, his team to be the bad guys. But once again, he felt the same way. Good yeah. cop, bad cop. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, basically, bro, they were virtue signaling. Um, they, they were trying to, because this was at a time when we were, had just, we were going viral because we made a joke saying that, you know, we don't dabble in the dark, right? About like not dating black girls or whatever, yeah. which is a joke. Yeah. Um, but they like, we went viral for that. So they brought us on to like, try to like virtue signal, like, do you guys really think this way about women, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, is that Andrew and Akash, Andrew had just gotten married and Akash like had one girl his entire life. So like they don't understand or know how the sexual marketplace is now, right? And they don't, and like the thing is that when we give advice, we give this advice to men so they understand how women operate in general so that they can have the knowledge and, you know, adapt and move accordingly. But for them, right, they're challenging our points and saying that's wrong, blah, 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 that's immature, but they weren't actually able to refute any of our points, right? And it's funny because one of the guys that's on a staff that wasn't married, we we're talking about dating apps and how they're skewed in a woman's favor. He was like, yeah, actually they're right, bro. And it's true. Like this number show this women swipe right only about 5% of the time on men. So the thing is, is that there was, you know, trying to virtue signal, whatever. And I think it was very unprofessional what they did, because if we brought them on the podcast, we would never do that. We never do that to our guests. Yeah. Um, but they actually made themselves look very stupid doing that. And it's funny because um, people keep sending me clips of like um, Schultz agreeing with a lot of the points that we make that he tried to argue against when we were on the show. Cause he sits there and agrees with Andrew Tate, right? But we pretty much agree with like 99% of things that Andrew says too. We've had Andrew on the show like 10 plus times. Yeah. You know, he's a good friend of ours. Shout out to him. He's home now. But, uh, but it's funny how like when we come on, they disagree with us because it was the cool thing to do. Let's virtue signal and look like we're cool at this point, which they ended up making themselves look stupid. And they cut out a significant part of the podcast where I made one of their people that was trying to challenge me that clown Alex in the back. They cut that part out because I made them look stupid. So mm. they edited the podcast as well. So... Um, they, in one side, they disagree. And then the other side, you know, they come in and they agree with a lot of our points when Andrew Tate says it, because that's the cool thing to do. So they, they flip flop, man. I, I think with, with, when you go on shows like that, where they, where they're trying to like hardcore prove their point, like e even, even you guys, like something that I've taken from this is, yeah, you have very strong, uh, opinions on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And clearly I maybe again, disagree with some stuff, but not once, even with your crazy strong opinions where you're like, Max, since you disagree, you're wrong. Like you are dumb. Like you, like you shouldn't do this. It was just like, okay, I, I understand. Like, you know, you're it's you, your I'm me. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think that's what, what I got from that podcast is that people were so opinionated that they like wouldn't allow someone else to have a different opinion. Even like, it was almost like no one can disagree. You have to, you like, you have to agree with us. Or if, you know, I never got that from like you guys. Yeah, no. And they had an agenda too. Like I said, they were there to virtue signal. And the funny part is like, they were trying to criticize us for like making a joke on, on, on black women, but like Akash had done the same exact thing. He had done the same exact thing and made fun of black women, but he's going to go in and attack us about that. So it was just, it, it was very, and if you go back and look at that video, like everyone was like kind of roasting them like, bro, y'all, you know, virtue signaling, blah, blah, blah. And they're supposed to be flagrant. So like what <laughs> y'all can make jokes and we make a joke. It's a problem. Like it doesn't make sense. So. It is what it is, man. Like, this is what I mean when I say a lot of times, like, these dudes in mainstream media are fucking pussies. Like, they just say whatever's correct to, you know, to not lose fans. Yeah. Like, us, the difference between us, and I think this is why so many people love us, is number one, we say what it really is when it comes to dating in the modern day world. And we're not afraid to say what it is. And we're not going to bend or fold to these fucking politically correct pieces of shit. We don't give a fuck what they think. Yeah, and I, I think I mentioned the big. I'm, I think I said they got the comedy big, specials to sell. So they have to have a certain type of, well, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I think I mentioned this in the beginning. Or did I say it off topic? How he's saying if you know if you have a, a split audience, if you're in the middle where you're like I'm not, I don't want to have an extreme take one way or the other. You're never going to have a, a full army of people on either side. But exactly. if you go to one side, you will have that army yeah. behind your yeah. back. You see it in the political world, which I'm I don't even get into politics. And I think a lot of people throughout watching me and even maybe on this podcast, whether it be from my audience or your audience that comes and checks it out, they'll probably think that I don't have crazy hard takes on or like wh what I stand for. And that's just kind of how I've been my whole life of like, I'm not an extreme thinker opinionated person. I'm more just, okay. I, okay. Like I, I see, both, see both, both sides. Points of views. Yeah. yeah. Which is, which is great. You know, um, just for us, it's like, we're, you know, we're, we're basically, we have our views and we're 10 toes down and we genuinely, my thing is like, I genuinely do think that this is the best way that men have to move in the modern day dating place. And I, I always cite my sources. I always, I talk about it in detail in the book with, you know, the studies and everything. And like, 
given the current sexual marketplace that we're in today, in today's day and age, where we have a 50% divorce rate, women initiate 80% of the divorces, if women's college educated, it rises up to almost damn near 90%. Um, we, we know that women are actually aroused and attracted to these things scientifically. And we live in a what I call the deregulated sexual marketplace with the amplifier of the internet and social media and it's dating apps, etc. the sex world. Like we, have, we have all these things going on. The reason why I say the things that I do is because this is the most practical and best advice for a majority of men in today's globalized sexual marketplace to move. Now, if it was 1950 and girls were more traditional and we had two-parent households and it was nuclear families then all yeah. over the place, I would change the strategy. But given the current marketplace that we're in right now, I'm telling guys, this is the best way to be attractive to modern day women in today's day and age because effectively, right? And this is why I didn't agree with Ben Shapiro with his advice. My thing is when Ben Shapiro says, you know, get married young and get a girl, blah, blah, blah. What people don't say, understand is that he came from a wealthy family. He is educated. He, he married a woman from another traditional Jewish family. So a lot of the things that um, can corrupt a girl were kind of taken out of this situation. I call it dating with trading wheels, right? But in today's day and age, you can't operate like that. He's telling you, oh yeah, do all these other things. That's the equivalent to giving someone a knife and telling them, all right, man, go into battle. And then every all the chicks are using fucking rocket launchers. The dating has changed significantly. <laughs> Women have all the leverage nowadays. So guys need to adapt to this new normal and move correctly. Otherwise, they face some serious consequences because like I've said before, relationships inherently put women and put men in a position of disadvantage especially with marriage and relationships and children with alimony family courts etc so guys really got to take a risk mitigation standpoint and that's the type of advice we dispense so that guys can move and not get finessed you basically here are the tools is your life to live yeah your choice to make yeah cool. but we're just opening their, their eyes yeah like this is what it really is guys you got to adapt to the new normal and and i i totally agree with the opening your eyes because even though I've very much in my in my views, when I first heard about red pill, blue pill, uh, you know, Rolo Tomasi, I'm saying that right? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, to Rolo. it to was Rolo. A, a lot of stuff that my friend put me on to him, and that's kind of went went down the the you know the rabbit hole uh, yeah. of it, <laughs> and it was just a lot of it of like. I've never really thought of it like that. I've never thought about like he did this analogy on, um, you know, a lot of girls will make a, a really good guy wait because. You know they want to do that, but then in Cancun they, they at make the phone rules. Party, they make rules for betas and break rules for alphas. Is that, what he that, says. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and it was more like okay, like I get it's kind of a very not I don't even say extreme, but it's a very like specific take on it. But I was like, I get what he's saying, and I was like, I've never thought about it like that. And I think I think what most guys hopefully should take away is that like listen to everything and then make your judgment on what's best for like your situation and what your, where your life. And, you know, cause I, again, I, I mentioned the worry is that some people are going to take it to such an extreme and then they're going to think that all women are bad. All women are evil. They're all out to hurt you all to get you because that was what I dealt with. And I thought that was just the way. And it wasn't until I found the girl that I'm with now and who I'm like, my eyes are opened of what a, what an actual quality relationship, what a great person, human girl is that I want to be with for the rest of my life. And, you know, and I think I had to go through a lot of bullshit to get to this point. And I didn't let the, uh, the fog of all the shit that I've been through prevent me from yeah. living the life that I really like now. We, we tell guys to accept women for what they are and not be mad at it. Yeah. Like, cause a lot of guys get the, you know, we call it the red pill rage. Like they'll find out all this stuff. Like, oh my God. No, oh. It's like, no bro, this is how women are. They love opportunistically. Take it in, understand it, accept it, move accordingly. Don't hate them for what they can never be, which is an idealistic lover. Ultimately, it's freedom, brother. It's you saying, you know what? As a man, here's what left I want to live. Is she going to be a part of this plan if, or not? That's pretty much what it is. And yeah. once again, men are taught to put women first, themselves last, and then they suffer. We're just saying, hey, put yourself first, give value to the world, and give back. I think that's a quality way to, to wrap up this episode. This might be one of the longer ones that we've done over two hours, I believe. I think there are a lot of hot takes in this episode. I'm sure. Quite a, a lot close, of, man. I, this, this, I, I think this will be one of the more commented videos that I've done. Probably. On, on both sides. People are going <laughs> to agree, disagree with y'all, <laughs> agree, disagree with emotional me. Emotional tugs here and there. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. So I, I want to thank you guys for, for coming on the show. I'm Thanks excited. I'm excited. Came down. Cool, um, you got anything like that y'all are... What's like, 
kind of like next for you? Like anything cool coming up? Obviously you have your book, which all of their social media podcast, everything, uh, this the link to the Amazon book will be down in the description. You guys want to check it out, their stuff, but any like super secret cool stuff? More collabs on the way. Yeah, more collabs on the way, more podcasts. You know, we're going to, you know, we're trying to take over here and, you know, wake more guys up and just understand like, yo, simping is unacceptable. Yeah. And it pretty much. Unacceptable. He has fed it. He does. Uh, oh, yeah. For example. Yeah. Uh, the true cases. crime stuff that I do yeah. uh, from the former law enforcement experience cover serial killers, terrorism, everything, all types of crime. And I give like my professional background experience take on certain things. So, you know, actually, I have one more, one more question. Sure, go ahead. When, uh, in relation to the, I think simp is such a weird word, right? <laughs> I think they even banned it on Twitch. They did. They because did. what guys were saying it in girls' streams or I, I don't know. Basically, they were calling all the people in Pokemon stream simps oh. for giving her money. And she's like their main cash cow. So, like, whoa, we don't want y'all calling them simps and shaming them for sending money. Pretty okay. much. Okay. Banning words. Okay. Especially, yeah. it's, it's, Lame. I didn't even know it was an acronym, right? Um, so, sometimes when I'm like, even texting my, you know, my, my girlfriend, sometimes I'll, I'll be texting like little cutesy stuff. Yeah. And sometimes I'm texting, I'm like, am I being a simp right now? Like, it, it, can you, no. can, can guys? So, 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 simply put, right? Just to make it very clear for you. A simp is someone giving attention and value to someone not giving it back. Okay. So if that's your girlfriend and that's your like long-term provider and, and like love lover, you're giving back, you're getting back value. So you, you, you can lay on your bed, kick, kick your feet up and be flopping your feet back and forth, texting your girlfriend, that's cool. <laughs> you're well, picturing that in your head right now, right? <laughs> well, obviously- I miss I, you. There's le levels to it, but like, once again, it's being received back versus yeah. you're just giving it and nothing being received. It's like, what are you doing? That'd be the worst. Reciprocation is the key word. If yeah. she provides value to you, you provide value back. Yeah. That's all it is. Like if your girl, if that's your main chick and she's does great by you and she's you love her, Cool, show her that love, man. Nothing wrong with treating her well. My thing is, I just don't want guys treating women well that don't deserve it. Women, like the thing is, is that I've always said chivalry is dead, right? And women killed it. So now it'd be, to be a gentleman, girls have to earn that from you. And here's a rule of thumb. She'll say, I love you. I love you too, baby. But you're, <laughs> but you're saying it back. Once again, receiving value, do giving you, it back. Do, do y'all text your thousands of girls that you're with? Do you, do you ever text like things such as like, you know, Morning with four G's. Hope you have a great day. A little, <laughs> little emoji in there. Nah, man, to be it's honest. Like I don't, I don't, I don't text any of my girls like that you know because I, I text my girl I don't, like that. Yeah. Dude. And that's cool. Right? That, <laughs> He's like, this guy fucking sucks. Yeah. I mean, if that's how you do it, that's cool. But I don't, I hate texting girls because number one to me, it's a waste of time. And then number two, uh, I, I, if I text a girl, it's to set up meeting her in person. We, we do more FaceTime. Yeah. Well, the 10, 15 minute call. So in your most used emojis, there's no little like heart ones or like little like emojis with a little heart guy. I use eggplant. Egg <laughs> <laughs> His top emoji is eggplant, water squirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, See, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's end on that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that will wrap it up for this episode of Don't Be Sour. If you're on YouTube, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. All of their information will be down in the description. If you're on any sort of podcast streaming service, give us a five-star review. I don't know what it does, but I think it helps out. New episodes every Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Eat more sour strips and ever forward. Peace. It's going to be a spicy episode. Heavy, I'm sure. Man. I'm sure it will be. Spicy. Do you have merch that's like a hoodie? I'm freezing, bro. You, you, cold? you cold? Yeah. That's kind of simpy, bro. Oh, you funny. <laughs>